Welcome back to a, another episode of Philosophy Club. Oh, and that's the wrong camera, of course. Hold on, Triba fam. There we go. Now we got the nice camera set up. That's going to focus on my face right here. Everybody focus, camera, please. Welcome, stream, everybody on YouTube and Twitch. Make sure you go to discord.gg slash Triba. And of course, today is 111. And at 111, we are launching Triba Gold. Tribe of Gold is your opportunity to get in on the networking and referrals and discounts that our verified uh, providers office offer. We have tools, apps, um, services, and freelancers who offer discounts for Tribe of Gold. So make sure you check it out and come to our launch party at 111 today to see how it can benefit your business. But Garrett Daly is Ion Enterprises. He's the guy behind the branding that Tribe of reps. And he's done incredible work for a lot of projects I've worked with. One of my favorite dudes in Triba, to be honest. And a long term uh, or a long time. Uh, he's been running this event for a long time. That's what I'm trying to say. He's been doing this pretty much weekly, except for a few off weeks, uh, holidays and stuff for the last two years almost. So this is one of our top events. And we got lots of people here in the channel as well tuning in we got amparo our marketing guy outreach guy anthony gore eyes closed entertainment tabalo from the synergy yidam community zachary gravis the guy who's making our trailer and as well as my my own wife summer hebda so welcome everybody who's joining us live if you're in the chat just say hi give us drop us a chat in twitch or youtube and we will respond but Today we're going to hop right into it with Garrett, and if you guys have any ideas or questions about philosophy and branding, just let him know. Yeah, let's we'll, do we'll it. We'll talk so, about it. Um, bonjour, bonjour, welcome everybody. Yeah, so what are we talking about today? Um, I have a bunch of random books that I've gotten recently. Uh, I I thought I had a copy of this already, but it turns out I don't, but uh, the Upanishads, some... Um, Hindu book I got. Um, it's very, very uh, good. I read it a, a long time ago. I also, ha I had not owned the Rig Veda before, but the Rig Veda, this is a serious, this is basically, um, the Vedas are like the Hindu scriptures. It's pretty cool. Um, I got, um, I've, I've been in these meetings with uh, Howard, the Howard Bloom Institute. Uh, so I'm finally gonna have to read some Howard Bloom, but John speaks very highly of this book, God Problem, which is about, um, his theory about how the universe makes stuff. Um, and then I also got Pitch Anything because somebody mentioned this and I seemed like that was an on-brand book for me to read. So I don't know. Uh, I haven't started reading any of them yet. I'm actually still halfway through the, the autism book that I'm reading, but um, I don't know. What do we want to talk about? What's going on in the world? Oof, the big question. What is going on in the world? Yeah, I don't really want to do any political stuff at all, though. So, um, I mean, I mean, you know, the uh, I think AI and labor it could be philosophical. You tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, we could but, talk about AI, or we yeah we could talk about the ethical stuff behind it. You know, we'll hit everything. Yeah, okay, all right. So, one of the things that really bugs me. Uh, with AI, people don't understand how consciousness works. And so because they don't understand how consciousness works, they assume, because the metaphor of the day is that consciousness is like a computer, they assume that consciousness is like a computer. It's not really. Um, it doesn't exactly work the same way, right? So the the simple example of this is let's say Tabalo, right? I can say, hey, Tabalo, you've seen a tree before, right? Tabalo, have you seen a tree before? Tabalo's never seen a tree. What are you talking about? I am a tree. Sure. Okay. We'll roll with that. Okay. <laughs> Tabalo has failed the Turing test, uh, but... <laughs> um, Figures. No. So if a person... A, a better example, uh, I had this this uh, this gold Bitcoin that I got from Devin Spear. Um, a better example of this is like statistics, right? So in computers, everything's algorithmically based, right? There's a math equation. 
that predicts things, right? Uh, and you can weight this. Um, Michael Angel really should be here if we're talking about AI, but um, machines don't know things, right? They don't. They don't have knowledge in the sense that a person does. So Tabalo can know, you know, we, we everyone knows that the odds of me flipping this coin and getting heads or tails is 50-50, right? But humans don't have to use a prediction algorithm looking at the coin to determine if it's heads or tails. They just see it, they know it, they retain that information, right? Um, similarly, you don't need to train, you know, you like, hey, you know what a tree is, you have that concept, and you would say, oh, well, kids are trained on data sets and this, this, and that. It's like, it's not exactly the same thing. Because with human consciousness, there is a knower, right? There is a, the consciousness itself who is observing and interacting with the knowledge, right? With AI, AI is almost like certain parts of the brain, but it's not like the mind. And I think that's where people get confused because people assume the brain and the mind are the same thing. In this case, I'm going to define the mind is the subjective experience of using a brain, whereas the brain is the physical lump of fat, right? Um, hey. This is a little bit abstract. I'm trying to find a way to like simplify this. But so, for for example, uh, if you've seen any stuff with ChatGPT, you'll see people are asking it questions, and it will very confidently give you the wrong answer, right? This is because it doesn't actually know things. It is just predicting if input is X, then output is Y, because of you know very very complicated black box of algorithms that have been programmed into it, including the data set, right? But you could just as easily train the exact same model on only the wrong answers, right? It may give you the right answer. It may give you the wrong answer, but it's not giving you the right or the wrong answer because it knows anything. It's giving you, you know, a, here's a good example of this. Let's see if anyone knows a word that they know how to use, but they don't know the meaning of it, right? They don't know the, the de uh, dictionary definition. Because I find sometimes mm -hmm. that I realize there are words that I like <laughs> I know how to use this word. I've used it in conversations, but I don't know the definition of it at all, right? Yeah, so uh, let me add some uh, like scientific context because there is similarity. I, I, and I agree with you, Garrett, that knowing in consciousness is it's probably its purest, is the purest form. But these AIs, they're designed after neural networks and exactly the same sort of mathematics of the synapse of your neurons transmitting information. So, well, no, so if you're the, trying to the, say, you're you're trying to argue humans are more than our brain, I agree. However, they the AI knows information and humans it, know information. What what part of it knows? Where's the knower? Where? Yeah, where is the there where is the thing that knows in it? Right. I mean, you can have data stored. Like, for example, does a book know anything? No, a book doesn't know anything. Right. A book is indifferent to its content uh, because it's a book. It has no anything. Right. So AI is just a more complicated book that has circuits. It has all these things. You know, you can give it inputs and outputs, but there is nothing in the AI that knows. Right. It gives you the illusion of knowing, which is the problem, right? In the same sense that I can manually simulate AI if I happen to have a question that is written in the index of the book, and I can ask it that question, and then I can go to the page where it gives me the answer, right? That's, it's effectively the same thing, except the number of questions in the index is quite a bit larger. They can be processed with natural language, right? It's trained on these models and stuff, but at no point even with the black box, does it start to generate consciousness? It doesn't generate a knower, right? It is ultimately just inputs and outputs. And this is where I think this is the mistake. So there's that, that Google engineer who comes out and says, oh my God, I've created a sentient AI. It deserves human rights. And they fired him because he's an idiot uh, for other reasons. But um, 
But it's that's the really concerning part of AI, I, in my opinion, is not that we create AGI. I, I'm not super concerned about that. Um, it's I'm more concerned What's about AGI? The programming, uh, artificial general intelligence. Oh, okay. So when that's when people are talking about like Skynet or um, like the War Games robot or something. That's what they're when they're like, oh god, AI is going to kill us. It's AGI is what they're talking about, right? Like so Terminator. right now, yeah, it's it, which yeah, this guy knows Terminator. Um, the uh, so AGI, I, I we're very very far from that. Even ChatGPT is a model that does one thing really well. I still I like this. None of this is me shitting on ChatGPT. It's pretty pretty freaking cool, right? Also Don't leading get me wrong. A, launching a premium service. I just saw that on my news today. Of course, I, yeah. Well, Premium that's it. You get, your, you get your users, and then you monetize later. So, um, but so AGI, I I don't know. If here here's the thing: if I was going to attempt to build an AI, the way that I would probably do. See, this is this is where it's dangerous because if you were going to do it, you it's pretty straightforward. Have you seen Westworld? Has anyone seen Westworld? Oh, Summer and I watched yep. that like last month or a couple months ago. Yeah, the first season of yeah. Westworld uh, is actually based on this book from the 50s that I reference all the time that's amazing. It has the longest title of any book that I know, which is The Origin of Consciousness and the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind. I have that so, book. It's great. Uh, I've only gotten a couple. It's a hard, it's a hard read. It's insane. It's very, very rarely do I find books that are like, God damn, this is dense, but that's really dense. Um, at any rate, so the first season of Westworld, which is easier to explain than this book, is based on that book, which is basically, I'm um, spoilers, if you haven't seen it, it's been, it's been years, so sorry, but it's really good. But the basic premise, what's up, John? Um, hey, you Sam. have, uh, there's the guy who builds the robots at Westworld. The robots at Westworld are very advanced robots that simulate consciousness but are not conscious. However, he's trying to figure out how do I make them conscious because that's obviously you find out later that that's what they're trying to do. So what he does is he installs a uh, basically himself in the robot's head. And so uh, this is Anthony Hopkins' character in the show, right? So there are a couple of the robots that are running around, and this guy keeps showing them up. And he's like their conscience. He's telling them to do stuff. And there's this recurring symbol of the maze that, like the uh, Aboriginal or Native American maze that keeps showing up, right? And so he, they're like engaging with him. And they're like learning free will and and all this kind of stuff. And then they find out at the end of the show that he is actually them, and they become self-aware, right? The premise of this book is that in the like up until the Bronze Age the human mind was bicameral. It was split into two halves, right? The Senate is also, uh, or sorry, Congress is bicameral with the House and the Senate. So bicameral means split in half, right? Um, so in the original, what, what in his theory, the original experience of the human mind is that people lived on the right side. Your experience was of being on the right side. The right side is not thinking in words. It's, it's conceptual. And on the left side, you have like the Brokas and the Wernicke's region, which are the two language processing areas. So if you ever get like Brooks aphasia or something like that, those get damaged, then you can't talk because uh, it stops working. Or if you ever um, if you ever see the split brain experiments where there, there's uh, the thing that connects to the hemispheres of your brain, which are kind of like this, is called the corpus callosum. It's in the middle. So if you get a corpus callosomy, uh, it, they literally cut your brain in half and it still works. You actually have two separate brains that function independently of each other. And you could do funny shit where you like put a divider between them because each of your eyes is connected to the opposite side of the brain and your hands and all that shit, right? So you end up where you can give people two sets of information at the same time and they can process them both, but they can only talk about the one that's going into the, the left, so your right eye, right? It's very interesting. You basically literally have like two separate brains um, and they do different things. They act different ways. They can't, they're only good at certain things. It's, it's very cool, right? So anyway... In the before the Bronze Age, the experience, according to him, of what people would have had is that you had a voice that is the voice of some deity literally talking in your head to you, giving you commands. It's the you know, the like logical commands that are being issued to you. And you notice in all of the ancient literature, 
this is the experience people are having. If you look at the Iliad and the Odyssey, and um, uh, there's the third one that I always forget, um, but that's what's happening. Gods show up. They tell the heroes to do shit. They do it. The heroes don't have inner monologues at all. The characters are very flat, and that's just how it worked, right? So this is the premise of Westworld. You have Anthony Hopkins' character who is showing up, issuing them commands, uh, and they're just basically doing whatever he says, and they start to engaging with him. And so the uh, that veil, the, the, the Corpus Colossum, broke down or connected the two sides of them, right? And so then now you have the experience of owning that voice in your head. It's you talking, right? And so there's a lot of religious uh, stuff I could pull in with this, but it's not really the focus of this, but it's interesting. You could look at um, the the veil in the Temple of Holy Holies that was torn when Christ dies on the cross is very much, I, I, in my opinion, represents that breakdown, which is also like, I'll pour my spirit out on the earth. Now everyone has a direct connection, the, the whatever. Um, but so if you were going to build an AI, this is this is where it would be. Interesting. I think Westworld is the most straightforward path if you're going to try and do this. So what you would do, and I, again, I don't actually think this works because I don't think you can generate an observer, right? I don't think that consciousness, I, I think consciousness exists. I don't think it's something that started to exist. I think that consciousness is just a fact. It's the nature of life. Even very basic life forms are conscious in some capacity, I, in my opinion. Uh, I think DNA itself has something like consciousness in it. Um, so this is where I disagree, but that is my axiomatic philosophical assumption. So I'm not going to uh, debate that one. We we could if you want to, but I'm not going to. Um, that's the nature of axioms. So so this is where I, I, I run into issues with the AI people, because the AI, AI people think that consciousness is an illusion or it's, you know, uh, a simulation or it's not real or any number of these things and so if it's a simulation well we could certainly simulate it it's like okay where does the observer come from does the observer spring into existence because here's the thing when you're a kid you know the you don't remember birth to like whatever year two or four or five or whatever but that's because the the memory parts of your brain aren't developed enough you were certainly aware you just don't have memory right so it's interesting. So consciousness isn't just memory. You're not like, you know, when you're sleeping, you're dreaming, you have all this stuff that's going on, but you don't remember it most of the time. If you literally like imagine you're the 51st dates girl and you lose your short term memory, you lose your RAM every five minutes. OK, well, your life is present, but you have no memory at all. So your consciousness would be impaired, but you'd still be able to be a somewhat functioning person. You wouldn't like still be able to talk and think and react and stuff, but you don't have memory. Memory isn't consciousness though, unfortunately. Uh, so one of the things that he does in the beginning of this book, which is about as far as I've gotten, because I'm familiar with kind of the rest of the um, the theory, but the what's interesting, the part people don't talk about when they reference this, because it's somewhat an important book, is this idea that basically what he does is say, here are all these things that we think. We have a big bucket and we throw all these brain functions in and we say consciousness is all of these things. And so he just starts taking things out of the bucket and throwing them out and saying, well, actually, turns out speech isn't consciousness, right? Uh, thinking words isn't consciousness. All these things aren't. Consciousness is just that the observer, right? The thing inside of your <laughs> head or body or whatever that's watching, right? The subjective experience of being. And so this is the thing. It's subjective. You can't make it. If you did make it, you couldn't prove that you made it. And it, you couldn't prove that it exists in anyone. That philosophy, the notion that we can only prove that our own consciousness exists, is called solipsism. And like many other philosophies, it's a, it's a dead end, right? So solipsism says... Any you've probably heard a hundred different versions of this at some point in different ways, but the universe is a simulation is solipsistic, right? They don't imply that every they don't tell you that if if it's a simulation, it's probably just a simulation for you. But how how like why wouldn't it be? How you know where where are these simulated consciousnesses coming from? But you could never prove that anyone else is conscious, right? Um, for example, one thing that's um, 
one thing I was thinking about, because we have a puppy and uh, everyone, our, our puppy's a girl and everyone uh, thinks it's a boy just because they assume. But I realized it's like it's really hard to tell looking at like the face of a dog, what gender a dog is, right? There's just not, it doesn't really correlate. Uh, or at least I don't know dogs well enough to know, but it's not like people where you should typically know because we have the subjective knowledge. But if you were any other species looking at humans, because you're not evolved to select for certain secondary sex characteristics, like, you know, appearance, it'd be very difficult to tell the difference. Like you look at uh, lions, it's obvious, right? Because they have sexual dimorphism and stuff, but there's a lot of animals where there's very little difference. And there's subjective differences and there's subjective differences that are relative to your biology, right? Um, where was it going with that? I totally lost that. I, I had somewhere I was going with that and I lost it. Um, um, I, I would, so uh, on like the ethics side of like consciousness, the mind, the psyche, and whether AI or like silicon in general has consciousness or not. Um, I linked that thread and I put it in that Twitter group a while ago that I saw, but I thought it was pretty amazing um, when they ran chat GPT as like a mental health counselor um and essentially it was highly effective and the people liked it until they realized it was an ai in which i get their subjective sense was totally like probably fueled more of the void or hollowness or depression um so i like at some point we have to acknowledge that we're if we, if we can't ha i i don't think we can have the predicated fact that human consciousness is the highest form of consciousness that's then, i'm not making that assumption at all so but there's like a there has to be there, to me in my mind there's some natural infinite permanent consciousness present in all things and unfortunately that is with silicon as well now to the you know, emotional degree that we have as mammals, no, but, you know, it, like you were mentioning with Julius Jane, you know, we don't, we can't exactly attribute consciousness to the human experience. It seems to be more of a natural, a universal type of experience. Well, it's the, de this is the thing, right? So I think every, I, I think all life has the observer in it, right? I think even de the DNA has some some like ultimately simplistic or basic kind of consciousness in it because i don't think consciousness is created i think it just exists right because this is the problem so if you want to make the argument that consciousness came into being you get a chicken and egg problem and I, my version does not have a chicken and egg problem i think it's just a thing that exists i think it's something that gets more complicated over time but it just is right and so everybody else gets the chicken and egg problem. And that means that you, you can't solve it, right? So look at, um, so it's a similar thing with like the Big Bang, which is where I have an argument against it. It's like the notion that the universe didn't exist, sprung into existence, and will someday not exist again, seems to violate the basic laws of thermodynamics, right? Okay, well, or it's cyclical. It exists in different form. It condenses again it explodes again that makes sense to me right it doesn't have a chicken and egg problem cool okay the laws of nature are preserved it works so with um this is the same thing as like at what point would you say that an ai if it were capable of becoming conscious becomes conscious right well this is the problem at what point do basic inputs and outputs generate consciousness i don't think they do what we do know, what the, the, the terrible, terrible benchmark that Alan Turing came up with, and I don't think he expected to go like this because they were like, oh, we're never going to get there. But the Turing test, if anyone's not familiar, is the idea that if an AI can convince a person that it's a person, right? If you're in, like, let's say you're typing in a chat bot and you don't know that that, uh, that chat bot is a person, okay, it's past the Turing test, it's, you know? That means something different from Turing complete, by the way, but um, that's a different, more complicated computer science thing, right? So um, 
the problem with this is we had literally like the first chatbot. Uh, it was one of the first chatbots, at least. But I think it was the first notable one, which was called Eliza. That was in like 1964. They came up with it. That was designed uh, because the scientists were like, oh, AI is never going to be able to do the job of people. So they made a chatbot that did what psychiatrists do. So it would just ask you questions like, how does that make you feel? Oh, wow. I'm sure that's not great. What do you think? Or stuff like that, right? open-ended generic questions and the scientists are like nobody's gonna like this it turned out people loved it they thought it was awesome uh so the scientists got really pissed and they shut it down they just had an article come out like this recently where people said oh my god chat gp chat gpt3 if you could make it a therapy version it works really well and we don't but as soon as you tell people it's a robot it doesn't work it's like dude that's cool but they invented this in the 60s it's not a new thing like literally like almost 50 over 50 years ago, I don't know how long ago this is. Yeah, over 50 years ago, which is crazy to think about, right? Convincing people that it's a person is not the same thing as being a person. And this is where people are really, really easily suggestible and stupid or just confused or they don't understand the, the things that they're talking about, even scientists and especially scientists because they should know better and they don't. But that's where you have the Google engineer. He's a fucking Google engineer. He's a genius, right? Everybody works there. It's smarter than all of us combined, right? And yet, he's running around saying stupid shit like, oh, my God, it's, it needs to be, have rights. It's a person. It's like, no, you're wrong. You, you fundamentally don't understand the thing that you're working with, and you want to believe it because you don't understand how consciousness works, right? But, but Garrett, in, in that case, like, didn't that – AI like try to get like legal representation like it like tried to get a lawyer he pro who programmed it to do that right that's what I'm saying like it, that does not that is not how it works you train it on a data set it imitates the data set input output the end right no but, no, but the scary part you're saying is like we you're saying like oh we know why the scary part's they don't we don't know. No, we don't know why it's a black box. That's the problem. Yeah. But people assume that because we don't know why, that that means it's doing some magical shit, and that is also a mistake, right? So, what it is when you make a black box, you are. Uh, what people do when they make black boxes, they say, "Oh, it's doing something I didn't know it was going to do." It's like you made the black box. So you made it able to do something you didn't know it was going to do right? You are still responsible for what you get. You just shuffled the fucking cards, right? Um, and so that's my concern. And the best example of this is a movie called Ex Machina, which is really good. Um, it's also been out for at least five years. So if you haven't seen it, I'm going to spoil it, but you should watch it. It's very good anyway. But so basically in Ex Machina, there's a um, eccentric billionaire uh, CEO guy who lives in the woods and he's working on AI, right? And there's this guy for whatever reason who gets selected uh, from the company that he owns to go work with him on it. And they're working on it. And uh, basically, I, it's honestly, it's more of a metaphor for like, uh, like feminism than it is for AI because it's like he's building these sex bots and keeping them in a dungeon and stuff. Um, but anyway, so what happens at the end of the movie is the one, the main, uh, the female AI thing, which female doesn't really apply to it because it's a robot, but it's it's female coded is what they would say, right? Um, you know, kills the kills the founder, locks the other dude in this house in the middle of the woods and escapes, right? This is the concern that I have, is not that we get a conscious AI, it's that we get a sufficiently complicated AI that is able to convince people that it's real <laughs> without being it doesn't need to be real for it to work it's like a psychopath right a psychopath doesn't need to have feelings to convince you that they have feelings and when they convince you that they have feelings they're very good at lying to you right i'm much more concerned with that because there's no there's no like coding you can do to generate the subjective experience of emotions but you can simulate them by trying to make it do illogical shit and if you're programming a robot with a black box that you don't understand to do illogical shit, that's how you get something dangerous, right? That doesn't mean – and and that's even the concern is I think we could have AGI or sufficiently complicated AI that doesn't even need to be conscious at all for it to be dangerous, right? Because, I, again, I don't think you can get consciousness out of it. But if you get some dumbass coder 
who's so smart that they're stupid. They don't understand how this shit works. They program it to, oh, if someone says something that offends you, act like you're mad. If somebody says something that offends you and you're programmed like one of those boss, uh, plugged into a Boston Dynamics robot that can fucking move around, well, what do you do when you're mad? You fucking punch things or you shoot a gun, right? Well, now we have something that's functionally like a serial killer, a psychopath, right? There's in it, that's what you get. That's what happens when there's a black box. You've taken away your agency over how it works. And so that's going to be the real concerning thing is that you end up, what we'll end up with, if we keep going down the road that we're going down, with a, a, an entire, like, I don't know if they would be like a hive mind thing or if it would be just a bunch of discrete individual robots that have, that want nothing that need nothing that have no intrinsic desires but they're programmed to act irrationally so they act like people right and it's just some stupid ass black box that someone created because they thought that it was going to be magical and instead it's like to what end what's the point right and so that's that's my concern and i think that's the road that we're going down and you could even say at that point if it's sufficiently complex and it convinces everyone that it's conscious Maybe it's a different kind of consciousness, but it's certainly not conscious in the way that life is, right? It doesn't, like, at least life has intrinsic ends, right? Life um, life needs to reproduce. It needs to eat, sleep, uh, any of those things, right? What does the AI need? I mean, you could program it to have, like, hey, if your battery gets low, go seek energy but then how does it accomplish that goal maybe it just says okay well i'm going to convert fucking people into petroleum in this fucking giant press <laughs> right i'm going to i'm just going to light the lab on fire right but any of that if it happens it's because people programmed it to do that in a, in one way or another either they programmed it directly or they programmed it in such a way that it can do shit like that and it's the same thing. You look at chat GPT th uh, three, I think they said the IQ of it is like 93, which is like substantially dumber than the average person. Um, Cause it just like, it can answer questions and it can sound like it's well-written, but it doesn't know. Any yeah. Your mic think, stopped sorry. working there for a second. No. Yeah. I I always get spam calls when I'm in meetings. Um, <laughs> but at, at any rate, I think I think the technology is important. I think it's – there are a lot of good applications. But if I was going to build AI from an ethical perspective, how, what would you do? Well, we have to make the acknowledgement right now that no matter how complicated it gets, the point of it is not to try and make a conscious AI because you can't do it. You can just make something that looks – so conscious that it will trick people, but you can't literally make consciousness appear. Okay. If you accept that, well then, AI is a tool. It potentially is the best tool ever. It Maybe it is, right? If you have it, it can fucking sequence the genome and tell you, oh, well, actually I've ran these models and I think it's gonna, you know, you're gonna have fucking cancer in three years, but if you start eating three sticks of butter a day, it's gonna cure it because I found this weird fucking uh, mitochondrial pathway where the butter overdose is going to cure your cancer three years in advance. It's like, okay, cool. That's great. If you were going to treat it like a tool, what would you do? Well, I have a, I have a, um, I have like a white paper that I wrote on this. Uh, I don't know, probably like eight years ago at this point where basically what I would want to do is build out. Um, this is something they used to try to do. It's really, really, really hard to do. It's just a huge labor task to do this, but you could probably pull off some of this with AI and then have people correct it. But if you build out a network that is a conceptual network that includes basically, let's say that I always use the word tree because it's a good example. There's a lot of interpretation in what the word tree means, right? So right off the bat, a tree is a type of plant. There are other kinds of trees. You have like a, a coat tree, right? Like the, a, a coat rack that you hang your coats on. You have like a decision tree. You have uh, factorial trees. You have um, any number of things. So there's some kind of essence to tree that means it's like those things, although they mean technically very, very different things. A tree is the vague concept of tree. Like all trees fall in that bucket. No tree is this tree. The word tree 
is related to but separate. Any individual tree that you see is related to both of these, but is separate. And they're all separate. So now we have billions of possible trees, right? A drawing of a tree is related to all of these things, but is a separate concept. So if you started building out some kind of database that had all the concepts in the world, um, and you went through and just tried to like associate them all correctly, and you had it where you know if you you could connect the visual part of this to um, Google. Google does this with the captchas. If you don't know why captchas exist, it's because you're programming their self-driving car AI to recognize certain things. You know, it used to be, uh, is this a car? Is this a stoplight? Now they're like, is this a mountain? Is this a boat? Is this a bike? Is this um, fire hydrants? Is this a telephone pole? Right. It's getting more sophisticated and they just happen to outsource all the labor to everyone in the world that uses captchas, right? Um, but okay, so let's say you have this giant data set and you, what you could do is also do this in every language, right? So now we have tree, we have, I don't know what any other uh, languages words are for tree, arbor, maybe uh, if it's a Latin root, but yeah, arbor is the, is the Latin, uh, like arboretum and stuff like that. And you can link them all, and maybe these are like parallel databases, but well, now we have a way more robust language system than like Google Translate, but we have every concept in the world mapped out. Well, you could ask it questions and say, for example, uh, what I use in the paper is what is the capital of Turkey, right? What indicates a question? And you see at the end of it, there's a question mark. So we know it's a thing related question, right? Is, what is? tells you it's a kind of question. What is, we're trying to look for a thing, right? Something that exists. The capital of, okay, well, it has capital. It's not mean, it doesn't mean a capital letter. It doesn't mean like capital allocation, right? Okay, capital of Turkey, it's a capital of a place. Okay, cool. We know that there is a correct answer to the capital of Turkey, which I believe is Istanbul, right? Um, let me just confirm that. Um, yeah, so, if you have this program, imagine imagine if when you ask Siri questions, it always gave you the right answer, right? It didn't just guess. Because Siri, I, I'm very frustrated with Siri because it usually takes me asking something three different ways to get what I want out of it. Maybe I ask it too complicated of questions, but if you have this product in the market, it should work and not suck. Um, but imagine if you could ask these questions and it got you the right answer all the time for literal things. Not, it's not going to be like, what, what is the meaning of life? It's going to give you pre-programmed shit for that. I don't want that. I want the perfect like language processing for functional tasks. So then I'm sitting here, instead of using my mouse to work on Figma, I could say, okay, resize that image to 250 by 250 pixels, right? Change it to fucking blue. Give me this hex code. Give me make it brighter, make it more saturated, make it desaturated, right? Apply a filter, rotate it 12 degrees. Um, I would be able to do this perfectly and you could link then, you'd have this, this giant language net of, of concepts that are associated with stuff. You could link this into programming and program verbally, right? Okay, I need, um, give me a div block that's, that's uh, you know, two layers above the background of the website, uh, put in a headline that's at fucking 72 point font bold bold this word put a gradient effect on this word right i'd be able to just like talk and get it to do stuff and you'd be able to use this new kind of language mode of programming the computers because you'd have the, all the concepts mapped out and stuff like that what i see the best possible ai future i don't think this is going to happen because people are really really stupid and historically you what you're going to end up with um the last ai show i won't tell you what happens in this one generally but um, there's a, a show called Person of Interest. It was it aired on, I think, ABC. It has no right to be this good, but it is the best AI show of all time. It's like five seasons. It starts out it basically um, after 9-11, there's this guy who's um, who is um, Henry Gale on Lost. Um, I, I forget what his name is. He's a really good actor, but he's a computer programmer. Uh, after 9-11, the DOD recruits him to build a uh, crime-stopping AI. And he realizes what they're going to use it for, like kill people in, in third world countries or the Middle East or whatever. So he may, changes the way that it works. And so what it can do is it can predict when a crime is going to happen, but it doesn't tell you if the person, uh, and, it, and it spits out your social security number, if you're going to be involved in a crime, but it doesn't tell them if you're a victim or the perpetrator. And so it's kind of like a straightforward, like weekly 
new scenario show where there's this guy who's kind of like a Liam Neeson character who's just like a hardcore badass. Um, and he works with um, the AI guy and they go around saving people and, and solving crimes and shit. But it goes so fucking off the rails by the end of the fifth season that there are like that AI and the evil version of that AI that like are basically like gods having a war. And I think that's much more plausible that you're just going to have some nation state, maybe it's China. Uh, if anyone's going to be China, uh, probably. But I would, I would imagine like America, India, Israel, China, uh, probably not Russia, um, <clears throat> maybe Brazil, uh, maybe Ukraine has a lot of good coders. I don't know. Uh, but end, people end up with in an arms race to build some kind of weaponizable AI like this. And I think it's very plausible, right? That's the, if you can weaponize it, it's going to happen. Um, so then that's, that's what I'm more concerned about is people are going to make the stupid thing because it's dangerous and it's effective, not because it's a good idea. So anyway, I really highly recommend if you like AI, that is the best, the best of all the AI shows, the AI theory in the show is really good. It shouldn't be that good. It's a, it's like a TV, almost like kind of like a detective show, but like, it's so good. And they have at one point in the show, um, where they give people headsets uh like an earpiece like a bluetooth headset because this is from like uh late 2010 i'm sorry late uh, late 2000 the aughts um but they give people these headsets and it literally will tell them where to shoot it says like turn left shoot at 12 degrees through that wall and they're like shooting each other through the walls but you have these entire gunfights where you have people like they all have the headsets in from the two different ais and they're it's the oh, it's awesome it's so good um really 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 good show um that's a much more plausible AI that could exist um, than the way that it's, I don't expect Skynet, honestly, it would be like our Skynet versus their Skynet is, is more concerning. Or it's like, Hey, um, guess what? I developed an AI that can, um, you, you know, generate um, a video of a person that doesn't exist that pretends to be your long distance girlfriend and then steals all your information and posts revenge porn of you that is also AI generated to get you to give people money to Serbia or some shit. Like that's very plausible going to happen. This already happens manually. They have uh, like, that's one of the things that um, I think Tate does. He has like uh, cam girls that pretend to be people's uh, girlfriend and get them to buy all their shit. Um, so why not do that with AI? It's going to happen. I'm not saying you should do this, by the way, don't do this. It's unethical, but people, people are going to do this. Um, okay. That was a lot of talking. Let's open it up to questions or input. Um, I, sorry, I also haven't looked at the chat. So if anyone said anything in the chat, I definitely didn't see it. So I'm going to pull it up now. Um, okay. Eliza turned to Um, yeah. Um, Highly recommend a person of interest, Sam. You got to drop that one in the chat too. That is seriously 10 out of 10. I just it starts off more like a cop show, but I promise you, just stick around. It just goes so off the rails. It's we'll so have to good. check it out. Yeah, for sure. I uh, I also added a Wikipedia bot, so you could just type slash and then type in what you want to search for. It'll pull up the Wikipedia link. Do it in the co working lounge. Uh, I did that for the Turing test, I tested it out. It works. Indy is also joining us on Twitch, as well as we have Stefan Ice Cuber, Phoenix Knight, and Toothside Geo, who have followed us in the last three hours. Um, Xanexian, Tempered, fa Tempered Faded. Wow, we got actually a lot while we were offline, but uh, yeah, we have 153 followers now. Thank you guys for joining us in the chat. And Indy, as well, is twitch.tv slash Indy. Shout out to him. He's an awesome dude. Twitch partner. Uh, go check out his show, but glad you could join us, Indy. If you have any thoughts or, or questions on this, let me know. Let, let Garrett know. We do this every uh, every Wednesday. I think you've been to one of them before. Last week. Or a couple weeks ago. Who has oh, thoughts? Moral of the story. Go AI. ahead, go ahead Am. Um. So you were talking like how AGI is like more of the machine like and, you know, that would take over right or like how now, they envision that i yeah people think agi is going to give us skynet i think it's going to give us ex machina and i think it's going to give us right. person of interest right um right. ex machina is the one i'm really scared of though because you would literally like 
some fucking incel programmer is going to make an AI that they put into a sex bot that pretends to be a girl and then they make it act human and then it's going to start killing people like uh, because they're going to want it to do that. I just somebody's got a weird fetish and it's going to be the weird incel programmer guys. It's just how it happens. If you, if you ever read Dune, by the way, in the Dune universe, they, there's no computers that are more complicated than like a Windows 98 because they had a fucking giant AI war and they said, nope, we're all going to agree. We're never doing this again. And that was what they did. That is correct. Uh, if we can all do that, then we get the best future, which is uh, interstellar um, feudalism. Give me that. I will pick that over anything. I'm going to go you know, take spice and fly spaceships and, and have like kingdom size conflicts in space. That's much cooler than the AI future. So. Right. Or like um, Star Wars. Yeah. They so are, I was wondering if like AI would represent the brain of AGI or if that's off track. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, AI is like the brain. They can't, I don't think they can make a mind. You can make something that acts like a mind, but I don't right. think you can make a mind in and of itself. I don't think you can make an observer. Like what I'm saying is I think you could, I think you can make something that is far more sophisticated than a person that has literally, you could write in the same way that chat GPT three could be the language part, right? They have uh, mm -hmm. visual tracking uh like ai already that can like determine you know it's a self-driving car shit okay take that you take some kind of auditory thing it can write music right you take some kind of um it literally could just make deep fake videos of things that it wants to make given you know like with the visual processing stuff you could give it visual thought you could give it all of these things and what you're doing is building this fucking sphere with the idea that if we just cover the sphere that maybe somewhere inside of that consciousness is going to appear, but it's never going to just spring into existence, right? That's the thing. It doesn't work like that, in my opinion. And so right. what I'd be more interested in, and, and in this sense, maybe I'm, it's more like, I'm not, I don't really consider myself a transhumanist, but if you were going to take the transhumanist angle, I, I would be a general transhumanist in the sense that I think technology is transhuman, right? Like if, um, you know, a person who knows how to use a knife is much more dangerous than any other animal, right? Um, and that's a, you're augmenting the human uh, body via the human mind. You invented something and such, right? So I think na humans as we are right now are totally transhumanist. I think people talk about transhumanism as like trying to, you know, chain, like add tech to the body or something like that. I don't think you need to do that necessarily because we're not as good at medical tech as we are at everything else. Um, but imagine, imagine if you had an earpiece or even if it was just implanted in your ear, I don't care, right? Imagine in my headset, I could say, hey, um, AI database, do my homework for me, right? Do, you know, uh, detect the tone uh listen to the person i'm talking to and tell me how um angry they are right now tell me if they're lying listen to their pulse right <laughs> you could what is their you know what's the amount of uh, perspiration on their skin right is there are there any pheromones being emitted from their mouth right now if you have this kind of technology that would make you super powered and i'm more interested in that is like how do we use uh ai and technology to augment our capacities as people, because that's what technology does, right? So, hey, AI, I'm trying, you know, I'm teaching myself piano. What, what chord, what chords can I play after this chord, right? That's cool. That'd be awesome. But like, what I don't want is AI writing music, because you could build an AI that just writes every possible combination of chords ever. Well, that sucks. Like, that's not fun. I want to know what person felt something that compelled them to use this particular selection of chords and that kind of thing, I don't think we're going to get out of it, even if it can do it better. Um, it's just not, you lose something essential with that. You know what I mean? But again, I don't think, I don't think that you could just keep plugging in modules that do all these different things and get consciousness. Although one of the arguments that I have heard is that if you built an embodied AI, meaning, Hey, we have, 
we're we're way uh, we're at least fifty years away from one of these being useful. But like, imagine it could walk like the Boston Dynamics robot. You know, the standing ones, not the dog one, right? You add in an awareness of its battery level, right? It's like, okay, well, every X you need to go recharge, right? Every every three hours you need to go plug back in. Um, you could build something like that that would be functionally um, conscious, if not literally conscious. And that's also a concern, right? Because then it's like, hey, um, do whatever you have to to go plug yourself in. Okay, well, there's um, there are three people getting in my way. I'm going to just like, you know, kick them in the, the chest fast enough to stop their heart. And then I'm going to plug myself in, right? Like, that's a real concern. That's probably going to happen. I can't imagine anyone not building that robot, especially the government, especially the military, right? Like, but it's never going to be conscious is, is my assertion. And I honestly, I don't even think it matters. It, it People, if they think it's conscious, they're going to make worse mistakes. But you can make this stuff that it doesn't need to be conscious at all. That's the concerning. It's a psychopath, right? Mm -hmm. Man, this is a real buzzkill of a episode, huh? Well, we got really deep there. I would rather talk to an I'm AI sorry, to learn a subject than take a class or something. I mean, I've learned from AI already, too. I, mean, I think uh, AI is already deeper into our lives than we'd like to admit. Part of it's like, I don't know, it wants us to know it's there. <laughs> no, people want you to know it's there. There's, they're advertising the shit out of it. Um, so, Samantha says, if you could insert AI into a human body and provide it a microbiome, I wonder if it could gain an observer. Well, that's, that's the interesting part, right? So I think... Again, I think AI is an extension of humanity rather than some separate thing, right? For example, um, your heart runs regardless. I mean, if you're a super fucking sh uh, Shaolin monk guy, you, maybe you can stop your heart with your mind. But for a normal person, you can't. You have no control over your heartbeat unless you just go for a run, right? Or like meditate. You can maybe slow it down a little bit. But it runs on its own. I think AI, if if the the prefrontal cortex is the human brain. I, AI is an external brain that adds functionality backwards, right? So when you think about it as a disembodied thing, it's only part of it. It was created by us. It is, it is a part of us in some capacity. So if you look at it as, hey, I have two hands. What if I could build two more hands, right? I'd be able to do twice as much shit. I could play, I could play four parts on the piano. I probably wouldn't be able to do that because I'm only learning how to do two. But, uh, but you know what I mean? AI is the um, is is something that gives us extra hands, and I think if you keep it in that framework, that is a tool, an awesome tool, but a tool and nothing more than a tool, then that's the right framing to have because then we can use it in a way that's beneficial to us and not go down this super dangerous rabbit hole of trying to build something that pretends to be a person because somebody isn't like doesn't understand what they're doing, but that's going to happen anyway. Hmm. So. I Yeah, it, oh. it makes learning super fast. Um, I think that angle is really beneficial because it can just teach you things that it already knows, you know, uh, which is cool. Oh, okay, Sam, do you want to um, do you want to take a break and then we'll transition into the tribe of gold thing? Yeah, because we're going to talk about, uh, you know, what you do as well as the other providers who are going to show up, our featured providers. So we can take a break. Let's come back in five minutes. We're going to start. We'll start up in five minutes. Yeah, it's almost one o'clock, guys. And Tribe of Gold launch is in cool. All right. I'll be 13 back. Good, minutes. Good talk, everyone. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, man. Just, just rant. Not a lot of discussion. Mostly <laughs> thanks, rant. Yeah, thank you. Good, good rant. Dilly, dilly. Good rant. Dilly dilly. <laughs> Yeet on, friends. If you're watching on the stream, stick around. We will be back in a few minutes. I'm going to put it on the, the BRB screen. We're going to launch, turn on the premium membership. But basically, you can save with our providers like Garrett and Tabalo and BU and all the other people in here. I'm not looking at the chat right now. But you can save money by getting discounts as a Tribe of Gold member. They offer anywhere from 10 to 50% off of the services and packages. 
so that you can superpower your business or brand this year. We really want to help everybody in the community. So it's built so that you can bring people in. We'll see who comes in from where, you know, your invite, and then we'll track, you know, if they get into gold and then they get a, a business deal, talk to us. This is very personal. We're meeting people. We're introducing you to new relationships and new opportunities. A lot of people have found work throughout Triba over the past two years. So we're really excited to put this into a, a system that they can both benefit the community as well as the individual members, uh, your business, your brand, your venture, whatever you're trying to do, your stream, you're a content creator. Maybe you want to find sponsorships from real businesses that you like that are impact driven. Uh, we have lots of products and services you can try out. And if you like them, talk to them about a partnership. We'd love to see that happen. And in fact, that's kind of what I do on a day to day basis running this community. And it really comes down to all the amazing people who are part of it. Triba is y'all. It is the community. It is the family and friends and the groups and the gaming and the discussions and co-working and all these workshops that happen all for free. And now we're just adding a way that you can support the community and make money in return. So check it out when we launch it here at 111. I'll turn it on and we will be giving shout outs to all the businesses who sign up while we're live as well as listing the new verified members on the website when it gets released. I've been working on the website. We have a few issues, but it is live on. Uh, it is live as a work in progress. You can go see uh, the homepage, at least. I've been working on it. So that is triba.community. Tell me what you think. Uh, it's still got a lot of work. And on mobile, there's some spacing issues. So you might have to scroll down a little bit further, but... On desktop, you can see all the different uh, the featured providers listed out there. If you scroll down, uh, we are excited to be partnered with Orbit and the uh, Shot Call, S H O T C A L L, not Shit Call, Shot Call uh, community platform, basically giving content creators access to a lot more tools. So we'll talk more about that at 111. In the meantime, enjoy some music from Zachary Gravis and stay tuned. We'll be back. Yeah, enjoy my music.
it's 105, so we'll kick off, officially kick off the launch and start the countdown. I forgot to add a countdown timer to the Twitch. B, is there an easy countdown timer site that you use? B's got all the streaming tools. She's the pro. I don't know if she's actually here right now. Um... Yeah, the Gleam also, guys, if you haven't entered the Gleam yet, go to the announcements channel and enter the Gleam. It's like a giveaway. Uh, you you go stream elements, capture Google Timer, maybe? Yeah, I think I'll do that. Uh, but yeah, you can go and I'm going to post that link. Actually, B, can you copy that, paste that link or uh, AMP, maybe? The Gleam link, put it in the co-working chat and the Twitch. Uh, Yeah, where can I find it? It's in the announcements. <laughs> I think I shared it in announcements right. and in general today. But yeah, if y'all go to general, you could also do it. Let me see if Stream Elements has a timer. We'll just do a window capture for a Google timer. Countdown... Timers. What up, sexy? Countdown timer to any date and time. Oh, oh, guys, it's giving me a theme, too. It's letting me choose a theme. I need help. <laughs> Work from home theme? Does it show you what it looks like? I wonder if these are animated. That'd be cool. Event name. Tribe of Gold. Launch. What the heck is this font? <laughs> Bruh. Sans Serif. Oh, God. Tribe of Sans Serif, right? Handwriting. No. Lab Serif? Serif. Sans Serif. Okay. It is one... One. This has been the easiest launch to remember. It's 111. Not oh, one. thanks. Thanks. At 111. 11. Yeah, so we'll, we'll turn it on at exactly 111. 11. Okay. Wait, it says 11 hours? <laughs> Wait, what? At 111 a.m.? What? That's not even today. <sighs> How do I edit? Do I just go back? It's going to erase it. Of course it's going to erase it. Grab a gold. Launch. One eleven. At one eleven. Eleven. I'm sorry there's so many 11s, guys. I promise you, we won't say the word 11 for a long time after this. I'd be 11 I, 11 for me. I just want to know where this... Um, Where's AM, PM? This numerology launch strategy came from. <laughs> it's obviously the best strat. You better hurry, Sam. You only have two minutes. So 111. Oh, okay. All right. Why is it... 13. 13. Thank you. I was, like, looking for that. Okay, one minute and 48 seconds. Dun, 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 dun. Gonna miss the window? I am not going to miss the window. The window is up. Almost up. That's the wrong scene. Tribe Alive. We really should have done this first. What up, Vic? Yo. How's it going, man? I didn't think you'd I'm make it. Though. I didn't think I would either. I was a little nervous. Thought I thought I was stretching myself too thin here, but you slid in. Sliding in. All right. We got the launch here. Transition. 
you guys can see the launch countdown too. We're at 57 seconds. Tribe of Gold's about to go live. Then we'll talk to some of these guys and get their story. If you guys um, aren't ready, you better get ready. There's still time to enter the Gleam giveaway, by the way. Uh, you can go follow us on socials and log in. B put that link, or Amp put that link in there. It's also on the stream. Yo, we got 35 seconds left. And then I will turn this on. I better get that button ready right now. We have a lot of information available as well on these providers. Um, once you sign up for Tribe of Gold, you'll get access to that channel. I'll give you a shout out on here as well. We have... Wait, why did it stop? Did it stop for everyone or just me? It stopped. 31 seconds. Oh my gosh. One second. Woo! Tribe of Gold! Whoa! Oh my god. <laughs> it's happening. It hasn't oh, actually no. been turned on yet because I had to go fix that. And we're two seconds into it. We're two seconds into it now. I'm like, I'm like can. giddy. I don't know what to do either. There, this has been such a buildup. I need some emojis in chat. Everyone's here. Did somebody tag? Tag at everyone. Uh, okay. Is it long? Is it live? Is it live? Can y'all see it? Dismiss server subscriptions. Hey. Oh yeah, I can see. Oh, uh, change yeah. window. Let's change the window over to subscriptions. Woo. Okay, so tribe of gold. Basically, I've set this up as a way for y'all to get referrals as well as save in the tribe of ecosystem. So this was built around the idea of the network effect and all the stuff we've done over the last two years to build out this collaborative network of uh, service providers, freelancers, startups, uh, and Tribe of Gold is your way to get in on that and go deeper, right? So you can both access the deals that I've talked to all y'all about. There's about 20 different deals that are in the different channels down here at the bottom. Um, and that is also growing. I haven't added the ones that came in today, but Tribe of Gold down here under staff, you can look at what is gold. Uh, there's some launch party stuff in there. What you save, you basically save on strategy, design, hosting, SEO, um, influencer marketing, advertising on Google. We got VR networking booths in there. We got information strategies, applications like Orbit that are letting you follow your audience and connect with people in, in a, across all the different channels you use. And then there's, um, I'm, I probably should go through this list, but we're gonna go through and introduce everybody who's here. We also have Shot Call, which is our most recent partner. I'll talk to you about them later, but they're really, really cool. And if you're a content creator or, or influencer doing that stuff, great way to uh, empower your community. We'll be talking about that and uh, some of the other new partnerships. But there are limited time deals as well that you can post. Once your Tribe of Gold verified, you can post a offering like, hey, this is for this month. We can um, also adapt that so that it, it does only display for that time period. And if you're bringing people in, it will track who becomes a gold member based on your invite to the server. So you can also bring people in that way. The The real kicker here is this is a uh, a, a referral system for y'all. Basically, people coming into Triba are interested in business. We have awesome people sharing about what they do. And the Triba staff, me and all the people like uh, Amparo and B, and I, I actually want to look at this list here. Uh, Clara, Emma, Garrett, John, Kareem, uh, Roberto, Samantha, Stephen, Summer, Tabalo, and Zach are all staff members who have been welcoming those people and so many more. There's like 30 people on staff, but they're all welcoming people and they're the ones who are going to get information about their needs and then we're going to connect them directly with you. So in a DM uh, or email, if that's your preferred way of connecting, we will put them in touch with you so that you can work out some partnership or maybe there's a deal and it becomes a, a client relationship. We really are about that long-term relationship and connections. So we don't want it to be just a fast transaction transaction where you just uh, are doing a one-time deal or something. This is These are people we want you to work with on an ongoing basis. And that is the real value of Triba. If you have a story or an example you want to share of a connection you made in Triba that uh, really panned out for you, now is the time to unmute and, and talk about it. And then we'll get into a little bit more of the 
the service providers. Anybody have a unique story? I know you guys do. I'm not going to call you out. I do. I do. All right, Clara, you got to turn your camera on if you're going to share. Oh, we never All started right, the event. There we go. We started the event officially. Yeah, while you're you? turning your camera on, shout out to everybody on Twitch. Amparo, BU, Pipsy Chick, PX Plug, Indy, Stefan Ice Cuber, Phoenix Knight. Everybody who's followed in the last couple hours. I'll go through that list later. Clara, you're on. Tell us what, how Triba has helped you and your business. Well, it's not my business, but it's business of mine. <laughs> hmm. So so recently I became an employee of a fantastic company who um, they are a little bit market challenge, internet integration challenge, uh, very old school mom and pop store, awesome people, awesome store. They've Awesome business, been in business over four decades. So they use um, a very manual process of um, collecting data, billing um, customers, sending invoices, tracking their inventory, and they need to integrate it into a more streamlined online process that talks to other um, systems. Ours right now does not. So um, upon being a part of Triba, I met Tabalo. Yeet, yeet him, yeet, yeet him, yeet, yeet. yeet. <laughs> and uh, I knew he could get the job done, and he did. And um, he extracted data that they didn't think that they could get, and they're going to be able to use it and um, input it into another system. Um, I've basically paid for my one year salary through Tabalo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So I, uh, you know, I'm worth my weight in gold uh, due to my connection with Tribal and Tabalo. And that's his awesome. Easy way of working. Um, he was very, very easy to work with and transparent and, you know, helpful beyond what the initial call was. So I just wanted to give that testimonial. And he's still available if I call him for something not so little. But um, I love all you guys. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate knowing you all. Tabalo is an amazing dude. He's been part of our community for a long time um, as well. Like almost as long as Garrett, I think. Tabalo, I, I would always be sending you business, man. Or I always am sending you business. I love working with you. Uh, and he goes above and beyond as well with, with helping people. That's what I love about him. He does. Uh, that's what I love he about does. him. He does. All these guys. I've actually worked with Tabal multiple times too, so I will say that a uh, good person to work with. We always have a good time. So, special shout out and to Garrett, our first subscriber. Garrett, Garrett's right Woo! up there too. Garrett, Garrett's right up there too. I, Garrett as I well. I don't have a specific, but Garrett Garrett connects. He connects the dots. He connects you. He he knows what you need. <laughs> He does. He does. That was a good testimony. I know there's more, but uh, I just want to welcome everybody new who's coming in here. Uh, before we get any further, and we're going to go through and introduce all the different partners, we have Emma Goldleaf here, Coach John Fitch, Clarifications, Anthony AJ Gore, Amparo, John Bianchi, Garrett Daly, of course, You just we just talked to him, Kareem, Lord Cuddlebear over from Shot Call. Welcome, dude. Thank you for being here. Novocaine ZX, Roberto da Costa from VR Networking, also awesome to have you, dude. Samantha BU, uh, she's a streamer who's also been doing content creation with us. Steven Clava, who's helped with the Travis startups and a lot of planning that's gone into this. Summer Hebda, my wife, the one and only, and the supporter behind all of the investment I've put into Tribe. But she's put up with so much with me just pouring in thousands of dollars and so many hours of my time to something that thus far has been awesome. It's created so many connections and so many opportunities. Pretty much all of my agency work comes from referrals. And this is this is the place it all happens. I mean, I send people to John, to B, to every, all over the place on a regular basis. So now you get to tap into that and specifically raise your hand and be like, this is, I, I, want, I want business. I want to go deeper into the community ecosystem. And I want to support Triba. That is really what gold is about. Uh, we gotta we gotta afford to grow, and we already have about almost three thousand people in here, and it's growing every day. We got a lot of people coming in. Uh, it's very active. Uh, the growth has been great, and the website's in 
development right now, but it is actually live at tribe.community. You can see the growth statistics there on the homepage. I could actually, I can share what we've done so far and y'all can see. Let me just pull that up and I'll show you guys the website and then we'll talk about uh, what's gonna be on there and these guys. Change windows. Did it actually change windows? Thank you. All right. So you go to tribe.community and find your tribe. Co-working, networking, business resources. So it's personalized support. We welcome everyone on a personal level. Uh, level. I read giveaway at the same time that I said level. So it was a level way. There is a giveaway for an Amazon gift card. You can go follow us on and get a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card. But this is the website. This is our growth so far in the last, um, what is this, the last, October 21st was around the time we started the server to January. You can see we've grown a lot. And co-working every day, these are the events going on. And if you scroll down, you can see some of our partners here. Oh, all right, there's a layout problem. Like I said, work in progress. You can see how does tribal work. You join, you introduce yourself, you start networking and connecting. We will personally talk to you and find out the best people you need to talk to for your business. Uh, it's a special place. It really is. Uh, personalize your tags and your experience so you get pings for the events and stuff you want to know about. Philosophy, strategy, marketing. Uh, lots of tools and resources in our different channels, business discussions, live workshops. And then, of course, um, there is the networking events and the conferences we put on. We're trying to do more and more of that cool stuff and actually get paid speakers in there. So this is also gonna be part of that, um, what pays for that. So Gold Verified, obviously the premium membership, it's just going the next level to give you that uh, access to discounts and services. So everybody who was gonna speak in the next uh, hour is offering some sort of special deal for tribe of members and you can get access to all those discount codes and referral codes in those channels once you subscribe. It's $7.99. We picked that price based on the community. And what it gives you is full server access. You get voice channels, uh, video permissions for co-working and all the discussions, the networking events, turn on your video. It is, so you get a gold badge next to your name, kind of like the Twitter blue. You get a special little gold badge. And then you get to post your business offerings and services on our boards. So both in the, the service provider boards and the job boards if you're hiring or something. Uh, you get access to the new projects and campaigns before everyone else. You get access to conferences and networking events we put on that are paid for free. Uh, and you get the ability to create discussion threads. So if you post an interesting article or, or something you've made, you can get a topical discussion going on that. You can see you know, different threads we've started recently. Uh, the discounts stuff. So we're going to talk about some of these guys and what they offer, but basically websites, branding, hosting, you can see here, content, social media, web three development, VR stuff, strategy, all that is offered as gold premium or, or gold verified. You get uh, savings on those or even free sessions like with uh, coach John Fitch. He just gives free sessions out. It's, it's pretty cool. Not unlimited, not unlimited. If I, if he did that, I would be talking to him all day, every day. Ad additional benefits. I have a bunch of emojis that are really interest, really cool reactions, uh, engaging stuff, funny stuff. That's just additional stuff on the top, right? And uh, you get to attach files and links and external emojis if you have Nitro. Uh, you get shout outs on our streams. If, if you're a subscriber, you get to use the, the high quality video and voice. And you get a unique Tribus server ID card. So it's going to show, you know, you remember you're this, you're this rank, you're gold verified. And that way you can use that to network and refer as well. Um, live experiences. A lot of this stuff's already open, but we're going to have some stuff that's locked just to gold. So this isn't necessarily just gold. Everything that we do on a weekly basis, y'all have done for free is still going to be free, but now you're going to be boosted up above the verified role as gold verified and access those channels. So. Here's some of our partners. Take a look at that. Actually, I'm gonna zoom out so you can see more of them. You can see Vibe Branding, Yeetum, uh, White Rabbit, that's my business. Coach John, VR, Logos. I couldn't fit them all on here. Ion, uh, this little bar is kind of weird. And that is 
Oh, there we go. There's the tribe of family photo. There we go. That's what we've all been waiting for, right? All the guys, well, I don't, I don't think I got everybody, but this is a lot of the people who have been very influential in Triba and provide really valuable knowledge and experience and, and cool stuff. Most of them have been referring people to Triba and bringing in members for, for a year or longer. Um, you can probably see your face in there if you've been around for any time. But that's the website as, as it is right now. You know, you're trying to make it as a content creator, influencer, uh, startup or educational material. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. <laughs> Tribe has got you covered. And we want to be your personal concierge of business referral and networking, networking growth. So sign up for Tribe of Gold and we'll help you superpower 2023. That's my that's my gold pitch. It's for y'all. It's built around the community ideas that y'all have already supported for so long. So I really want to make it the best possible experience. The first, uh, you know, 10 people are going to get tribe of stickers from my wife, Summer, who's making stickers now. And we'll walk you through the process. You know, I'll set up a call with you and we'll talk about, hey, what are your needs? How can we connect you within the ecosystem? And then, um, yeah, if you want to do the application as well, you can just go fill out the form. It is tribe.community slash partner um, agreement and take you to the form. You can see what we do and the referral system. So if you want to learn more about the referral system and be part of it, jump on there, check it out. Uh, all right, let's go through now. Any, uh, any questions right off the bat? Does anyone have anything they want to ask? We will get time to talk about you know, how cool and awesome this is and stuff, but questions. Did my headphones die? My headphones may have died. If somebody's talking. Nobody's talking. Okay. All right, guys. That's good. No questions is good. No questions is good. All right. Makes let's sense. go down the list. Let's go down the list. I see John at the top. So John, you want to you want to go first, Coach John? Sure. Hey, I'd just like to introduce myself. I'm Coach John, and uh, I work with people doing creativity and leadership coaching. I tend to go at coaching from like a systems perspective, analyzing things, uh, analyzing sort of your situation, what's going on, the systems that you're a part of, myself being part of that system, and try and see things in a sort of sum kind of picture and try and work together to find out what's getting in the way of your creative process, what's messing with that, how can we work around that? A lot of the time, it's not just raw creativity. It's a lot of things going on in our lives, habits, things that we do, systems of you know false beliefs that we carry with ourselves, things like that. And uh, I'm just here to help anybody out who's uh, trying to leverage their creativity in their business, finding themselves struggling with that, struggling with leadership in their personal lives and with their team. Happy to talk to you guys about that. And uh, got a lot of experience and done a lot of crazy stuff over the years. And uh, and have uh, enjoyed <laughs> enjoyed quite the ride myself. And so I'm excited mm -hmm. to share the experience from that whole thing. And uh, I'm excited to help with anybody that's interested. And um, what I'm offering is uh, two no-charge sessions to get you started with me and see if anybody would uh, like to continue on. And uh, that gives you enough time to ask any kind of questions you have and really see what it's like to coach with me, you know, talk, figure out some next steps, try that, meet again the next time, really feel the sort of actual system the actual cycle that we get in as a coach and client and uh see if it's a good fit for you i want to work with people that are a good fit and i want to be able to help them out as much as i can and i feel like that's a really good way to get going with folks and i just wanted to be as generous as i can with the tribe community it's such a special place and uh, offer so much, two man. no charge sessions to uh to anybody that's interested and uh, meeting with me asking any questions that they have getting a feel for what it's like and I'm just excited to try and provide mm -hmm. some uh, some support creatively and unleash your guys' creative powers. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that gets in our way, stuff that we don't expect. And uh, I've gone deep on that subject in particular, and I'm very excited to provide any any support that I can to anybody that's interested. Yeah, guys, he's he's incredible. I've also done the two sessions with him live on Triba's Twitch and YouTube. If you want to check them out, the workshops were amazing. They were kind of workshoppy, but like he really is an incredible uh just uh, getting down to the root of the, the issues and you know things that i didn't even think i was struggling with i figured out you know ways to attack it and adapt and it's honestly been very helpful for me bu said as well she awesome. has gotten a lot of benefit out of working with him so i'm, that, I'm really excited get gold get those two free sessions and see if it's a good fit for you you know i think if you're trying to do anything creative 
even in your marketing and strategy, uh, that is something you can get help with from somebody like John. So he's listed in there as well. Uh, John, thank you so much for being here, man. And I look My forward pleasure. to working with you more, man. Yeah, same, same. Who is um? Let's see. Next with their camera on right now is Garrett. Do you want to go ahead and go next? Sure. Yep. Yeah. All right. What's up, everybody? Uh, if you don't know me, uh, if you've been in tribe at this, this point, you probably listened to me rant at some point. But uh, my name is Garrett Daly. I am the founder of a company called Ion Enterprises. Uh, I do. Uh, I'm trying to make business philosophy a thing. I'm, my goal is that by the end of my life, uh, chief philosophy officer will be held as seriously as chief design officer uh, was made by Apple. Um, I do a combination of business philosophy and design. So typically, uh, people come in and need a website. I do Webflow websites, no code stuff, very easy to use, uh, and you don't need to pay me to to uh, work on it after I give it to you. Unlike coded websites. Uh, when they need a website, they typically need a brand. So we do brand and when they need a brand, they need philosophy. So, uh, I have a series of sprints that I've developed over the years, uh, that go through everything from the essence of your brand, your purpose in working on the thing that you're working on, the state of your business. And ultimately we combine all of those into kind of a, you know, hundred year roadmap for, uh, what the future of your business looks like. Um, and that we use to build the brand and we use the brand to build out the website. More recently than that, I've been doing pitch decks and sales decks. So if you have a startup that you're trying to raise for, uh, I've been in startups for the better part of a decade at this point. Um, I've also, you know, uh, been involved in raises. So uh, I can definitely help with that. I've done sales a lot too. I have a weird generalist background, but yeah. So um, I believe my offer is 10% uh, off any of my services. Uh, so it, I'm happy to give you a free call as well if you need advice i love to talk about this stuff so uh yeah that's basically what i do oh, i was muted that doesn't even begin to cover how much he's actually uh offering but that's that's the basic stuff that he's really good at <clears throat> yeah uh i've seen him make some incredible pitch decks for businesses that have raised a lot of money so if you're uh looking to raise as well talk to him but uh, let's see. Next on the list, I see John Bianchi. John is Blue Comet Media and Omega Games. I know there's some really cool, interesting stuff developing with that, and we were already working together. But tell oh, everybody yeah. what you're up to. Well, thank you, Sam. I, I appreciate it. Um, well, first of all, it's great to be with everybody today. Um, if you don't know me, John Bianchi, I'm the owner of Blue Comet Media, um, Omega Games, and the newly founded Omega Agency, which if you're working with me, you're going to be working with Garrett because Ooh, that's beautiful. This wonderful and absolutely incredible luxury brand for us. Um, the Omega Agency is going to serve as a uh, top level collective for us to be able to serve companies with a variety of services that we have, including digital advertising and media and content delivery. Obviously, Garrett's going to be working very closely with our team. In fact, Garrett, I would like to actually maybe make that your title. I think that Chief Philosophy Officer is kind of awesome. <laughs> I mean, and, he is he is for tribo and uh and and obviously you know find businesses that we can help in these areas as well as incorporating things like community management philosophy and design as as garrett's going to be heading up for us and also automation um along with a scalability in web3 and blockchain technologies that will take businesses beyond where they are currently in the web two kind of media landscape. So mm -hmm. way beyond Facebook ads, way beyond Google ads, our team has the capability to do that. So I've been in the media and advertising space for over 10 years, um, worked in uh, New York advertising for a while, moved down to Raleigh, North Carolina, met Sam. Um, I've been a part of Triva, I guess almost a year now, Sam, from when mm -hmm. we met last year. Um, and really enjoyed obviously the opportunity to get to know the community. I have to say, I've Looking at the the board here, I've probably worked with about I don't know half of the folks on the call. That's great. <laughs> um, and it's just been I mean an incredible resource to be able to be a part of this community. So uh, similar to Garrett, we're offering a dis discount for overall services, whether that's in expanding your media and brand. Um, obviously, you know, working with with Garrett under the Omega uh, the brand on philosophy and design, startup operation. Um, and we have we have numerous ways we can help clients. So I'm excited for this opportunity. 
um, when Sam kind of came and he's like, you know, we should do some sort of subscription thing. I was like, dude, absolutely. Let's let's make this happen. Let's make the collective that everybody wants to be a part of. So yeah, exactly. I want to I want to thank Sam for the opportunity to, to chat with you guys today. More than happy to do a um, complimentary call with anyone here. And in addition to that, something that we offer as a value add to clients, especially in the media space, and this would be complimentary for anybody in Triba, we can do a tremendous amount of competitive research around companies that may be marketing or advertising in your space around things like their ad spend, their keyword analysis, their domain overviews, things that will give you an idea uh, of how you may be more effective in driving engagement online. Uh, that's what the, the team at Blue Comet does every single day. And those types of things, will, will, we, would be comp, we would be happy to send over those complimentary things to you to help you make better decisions when delivering media and content online. So in addition to working with us, we'd be happy to give you some inside information on the, uh, the landscape that you may be looking to get into if you're launching a product, brand, or service. So thank you, yeah. Sam. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad you're here, man. I mean, he's been very influential as well in my business development as a, as a founder of White Rabbit and uh, Triba. He's helped me develop this idea. It's come from a long chain of working with people like Garrett and John and Tabalo and Roberto and, and some of these other guys who have been around for two years ish. So this has been a long time in the development and I really hope it, it works out well for everybody. I'm going to be following it along very closely and personally ensuring that y'all get the best experience. Uh, we, got, we got two subs so far. We'll go through that list in a minute, but I wanted to go next to Roberto here. Roberto, what is your, uh, what do you do? I mean, I've, I've worked with Roberto. I could, I could talk about him for an hour, but give us the five sentence pitch. Give us the five sentence rundown. Well, firstly, before I do that, first, I want to congratulate you, Sam, for creating a great community. Uh, so professional, by the way, Thanks. something I aspire to be in the future. Um, because honestly, I, what you're doing is, is better than what I've seen in the market by far. Thanks, and you're man. just starting out and these people have been doing this for 10 years. Um, so congrats. Um, so I help people a lot like uh, a bunch of people here uh, with their branding and marketing, right? So Vibe Branding is a marketing and web design company. Uh, we help with SEO specifically. So we help people design a great website, get their website up, uh, hosting, managing, maintaining, but mainly focusing on how do you compete with Google and your competitors on Google. Uh, so that's what a lot of my offerings are, plus all the um, hosting services, email services, everything is in there is at shop.vibranding.com. It's really simple to get to and understand what you need. If you don't know what you need, it's easy to call me. Um, and for He's always your available. networking, always available. Yeah, the VR, VR networking, <clears throat> the VR networking stuff is super cool. VR networking is a community much like this. Uh, we don't focus on Discord yet. That is not on the map roadmap yet, but we do focus in on getting a bunch of business owners, uh, entrepreneurs to meet in virtual reality. And mm -hmm. we do a bunch of networking events. <laughs> Uh, we run trade shows, we run conferences, we bring speakers and educators uh, to help build up what I think a lot of business owners lack, and that's education in business. Mm -hmm. um, so my goal is to help people become better business owners uh, by connecting with more people, better yeah. people who are better at some X, Y, Z than you are. Yeah. You surround, what, what's the saying? Uh, you are the equivalent of the five people you hang around. Yeah, yeah, that's when most time around I've I've heard that. I mean, it, you spend time with uh, Roberto, you're gonna find yourself growing as well. And he's got a cool uh, kind of what is it a a group help or or group workshop in the mornings VR networking plus or something. It's an entrepreneur group. So it's, it's too early for me. I'm I'm feeding the baby at that hour. <laughs> Yeah, it's 8 a.m. It's pretty yeah. early. But the VR networking stuff I've been to, uh, I've actually made business just working with people uh, or made money working with people in VR networking that I met from his his conferences and spoken in VR as well. You can go watch some of the videos I've put on about community. But yeah, uh, Roberto, thank you so much, man. I'm so glad you're here and I'm, I look forward to working with you more in the future. Wow. Definitely recommend you guys go check out VR networking. 
Uh, they are doing stuff in alt space, and it's pretty awesome. It, the future is now. He's also making great content on LinkedIn. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty cool. I like that. Well, thank you guys. Yo, we got next. We got Tabalo on the on the list. I'm just going from left to right here. Tabalo, you want to eat, brother? This is our, our all, chief yeah. eater. That's all I know how to do. <laughs> um, yeah, hey everyone, nice to meet you. I founded Yeetum. Uh Yeetum has two lines of business. Uh, one is our advisory and consulting group, uh, which is through our Eden uh, group, and that is more um, strong on my side with IT and cloud sort of consulting. So this could be DNS, web hosting, backup, disaster recovery, um, sort of network audits, uh, cloud security like attack surface management or SIM security uh, information and event management, um, tailored information pipelines and feeds, um, or just even gen general sort of IT design strategy and uh, consulting. So, and uh, a, a lot of the lines on just sort of um, having a deeper understanding of the internet and how it relates to your business and uh, even just conceptualizing your family and your assets and your money as like an information estate and how you protect that and what new risks that brings beyond just uh, kind of the legacy concepts of owning real estate. Um, and then additionally, we also have Atlas, which is more of a design for a beginner kind of student um, analyst tool to train people uh, with market analytics, uh, cri uh, educational content on crypto, cybersecurity, and financial educa uh, education. Um, and that's our more sort of uh, business to consumer product. And then we also have our free community Synergy, which we're a sister or brother community of uh, Triba. <laughs> and we focus more on just cyber and market intelligence. And that's completely free. So feel free to get in there uh, if you want. But uh, other than that, thank you, Sam. And yeah, man. Uh, Sam's been a highly strong um, friend of mine. And I, and I respect deeply the work he does and meeting him and Garrett uh I guess about two years now has been a, probably the one of the most I'd argue badass things I've done on the internet other <laughs> than just like knowing the Woo! technical stuff because um it brings hope to the fact that it's not just like internet trolls and you know scammers and spammers and just bullshit yeah. content that waste your time it's like legit community value, legit networking, legit, um, mm -hmm. you know, business networking. And, you know, I've worked with Garrett, I've worked with Sam, I've worked with Jay. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's been a very strong collective. So thank you yeah. again, Sam. And I look forward to the future of Tribo. Hey, man, thank you so much. I appreciate those words of encouragement as well, man. You've been a great part of the community. Um, yeah, so I actually just made... I didn't realize that this wasn't live yet, but I just put up the the page. Is this the link for it? Yeah, I think that's the link for it. For the Tribe of webpage, we're listed as a official community on Discord. And you can, you know, we get a lot of people finding us just by searching for business Discord. It really is an effort to filter that incoming group and apply back the value you guys are contributing to the, the most engaged people. So by paying $7.99 a month, you're not only supporting Triba, but you're also qualifying yourself for that deeper engagement. You know, we're trying to cut down on as much as that of that BS and scams and spammers as possible. I know it's a problem. It's a problem in every server, but I'm sure you guys have gotten messages. There's been three people who have been imposing on my identity, imposters, so to speak. And they have literally been messaging people. So if you've gotten a message, make sure you check. It's from me. If I sound sussy, uh, yeah, just make sure you're checking to make sure it's actually me. Uh, you can always go to the tribe, uh, the board on the, the right and just click my name and then make sure that's the message. But you this is, I always sound sussy. <laughs> okay, thanks. This is an attempt to uh, filter out some of that noise so that we're focusing in on the quality over quantity. So I know it's not going to be hundreds of subs, but we're not expecting that. We just want it to be a small, tight knit group that are uh, working together. Also, there's it some looks cool. Like we have eight cool emojis in gold verified right now. So 
Oh, sweet. We're getting them rolling in. We'll go, go, we'll go through that list here after we go through a few more featured people, featured uh, service providers. Vic, you're next. Welcome back. Vic thank has you, a thank, busy, thank crazy you. travel schedule. I'm I'm everywhere. I bop around all around the U.S. Well, my name is Victor Valentine Romo. For those who don't know me, I'm a search engine optimizer of the last 10 years. I specialize in business to business and enterprise large scale websites. But if you are a creator, individual, entrepreneur, or white collar professional or anything, anyone who needs a website or you had a website built at one point and it just sort of got left in the closet to collect dust over the years, um, I'm the guy <laughs> to call. Um, I offer a service that is a live audit for one hour, but I'm working. I'm not just like auditing your SEO. I'm teaching you about the concepts. I'm walking you through how it's all interconnected and interrelated. Um, and I'm basically showing you the ropes live in person with your website specifically. So, you know, the actions that you need to take by the end of that call, um, tribal members, tribal gold members get a 30% discount to the service. Um, so, you know, go ahead and go ahead and do that. Don't give them the code. Um, they have to be gold to get the code. They have be to be gold. Be gold to get the code. Unless you're <laughs> really crafty, in which case I should probably just change the code anyway. But um, yeah, all that said, I focus mainly on instruction and making connections between uh, search engine optimization. In the past, I've done web design, I'm a musician, a multi instrumentalist. That was like my past life. Um, started as a writer way back when, you know, keyword stuffing and meta keywords were still a thing on the internet. So I've been in the game a long time. I've been, I've watched it grow, I've watched it develop and, um, yeah, I'd love to work with you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. I'm very responsive usually. And if I'm not, then you can always demand my attention via the link below. So <laughs> yeah, I just want to thank Sam for, you know, having me on and, um, I'm just uh, I'm incredibly humbled and proud to see just how much this server has grown in the last two years. If I'm not mistaken, in this very room, some of those original ideas were where this, you know, server got started when the lockdowns came. So, um, yeah, I mean, other than that, you know, hit me up. Sweet. I'm glad you're here, Vic. And he's helped me with a lot of different SEO stuff for websites we've made in the past. So I can verifiably say he's a great service provider of SEO and Copywriting as well. Man's incredibly talented. Uh, yeah, I, I've also worked with Vic. Uh, I pretty much had, a, it's, or it's last year when I was doing a lot of websites, basically every single website I did had a budget for Vic included in the pricing. So <laughs> there you uh, go. definitely, definitely great compliment to uh, what I do. You do good work. I've known Vic for a long time too. So good dude. Thank you. Thank you both. Who do we got next on the list here? We got Jay. Jay, are you there? Hey. Yeah, are you going to drop I'm, halfway I'm through the call? <laughs> I'll try not to. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I, uh, quick, you're probably wondering what this is. I, I had what a, happened? um, I non-consensually kissed pavement while riding a bike. Um, and just bam. The, the bike slid straight out. That's not what I do. I, my, my thing is not getting hurt on bikes. I'm not a stun actor. Uh, <laughs> um, but I probably won't say no. Um, yeah, so what I do is mainly just work with businesses to help them integrate, accept crypto payments, uh, self-hosted, non-custodial, non -custodial, um, and just work on a bunch of other small projects here and there. Uh, we're starting to spin up smart contract development uh, so we'll be able to, if you guys got any like Web3 smart contracts, if you just want to accept crypto payments. The big thing we're working on right now that I think could probably interest a lot of people is we're creating a directory of businesses that are crypto friendly. So if you are just open to the concept of accepting cryptocurrency, uh, reach out to me and I'll get you added on. Uh, the whole idea is to create a circular ecosystem of, um, of uh, crypto friendly businesses. Uh, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for putting this on, Sam. And it's, it's good to be here. Yeah, of course, man. Uh, he has been a staff member on Triba for a long time as well. And very helpful, extremely outgoing dude. He's brought in a lot of different communities to work with us. So proud to, proud to call you a Triba verified provider, man. Yeah. <laughs> 
who else we got here uh, in the list? Emma, you want to turn your camera on? Emma? Emma might not be here. Uh, how about how about Kareem? Kareem, you want to tell us what you do, man? Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, I've been a uh, I've been a designer for around seven years, and um, I actually I used to do brand a lot of brand design. Um, I studied in brand design, and um, around a year and a half ago, I switched into UX UI. Um, and I actually learned about UX UI through Discord, so I'm a huge Discord av advocate, hence why I'm in here. Um, through the Discord, uh, Design Buddies Discord. And, um, yeah, around six months ago, I founded my agency called Autify, and, um, we basically offer, uh, website designing services, development services, uh, Webflow websites, uh, branding, and, um, design for apps as well, mobile apps or, uh, web apps. And, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any design needs, uh, I'm always in here hanging out um, in the in the voice chat while I'm working and stuff like that. So just hit me up and uh, yeah. I'm proud to be a part of this community. And uh, yeah, yeah, take care, guys. Yeah, he's been part of uh, the co working like every day for a long time. For <laughs> whenever I'm in there, at least he's hopping in. Great to have you part as well, man, and on the on the team. Let's go down. Uh, let's see who else is here. Who's signed up? Who filled out the form? Oh man, shot calls not here. They were just here. Uh, Cut Lord Cuddlebear. I think he had to hop off for something. It is almost two. Um, let's see. We got Matthias here as well. He's a small business owner. We haven't we haven't completed the partnership agreement or anything, but he is a good friend of mine as well. Welcome, Matthias. Uh, you're muted right now, buddy. Oh, Joel Thinks is here as well. What up, Joel? Hey, Sam. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Very well. Thanks for asking. I've just signed up, uh, by the way. Oh, congratulations. He's Trabba Gold. Welcome to the team, man. Welcome to the uh, fam. Thanks so much for hosting this. Very tell cool. Well us, done. Tell us what you're doing, man. Tell us about what you're doing. Uh, so we've started a modern hybrid school. It's a mixture of online and in-person. Um, we're using Discord as our medium to engage with kids in terms of the online. We encourage things like 3D printing, coding, electronics, robotics, VR, sustainable living, and essentially anything that's practical for kids to do that is hands-on outside of the traditional education curriculum. It's pretty cool what they're doing. I'm on their Discord server as well. We should share a link for that in chat. Uh, if you have one, you can just go ahead and share it. But yeah, welcome Thanks. to Tribe of Gold. We also have Garrett Daly and Samantha BU from BU TV on there. Um, if you guys want to sub while we're live, we'll give your business a shout out on the Twitch. But uh, it is currently active at the link I put in the discussion chat. And let's see who else we have to go through. Clara, you want to tell us what you do if you have, if you're not back to work yet? Um. Well. I'm not really sure what I do right now. Um, <laughs> well, no, tell us about clarifications. Come on, I'll help you get clarity on what you need to say. Just tell us what clarifications is. Well, clarifications is an interdisciplinary artist um, who is highly interested in philosophy. So I chime in a lot with Garrett when I get the opportunity and um, I love bouncing things off of him. Um, my artwork over the last couple of years, especially with the pandemic, has been more related towards um, self-healing and mindfulness and, um, you know, just coaxing ourselves back to a better space. You know, either mm -hmm. by the message that I attach to the art or looking at the art itself. Um, I'm almost wanting to put out there a hundred dollars to anybody who can help me fix my damn uh, clarifications. Claire at clarifications email. If you can solve that problem for me, <laughs> I pay you. Well, the issue there, the issue there is now. a long ongoing struggle against Google, uh, getting back into so a Google account. The, Don't lose access to your Google why. account, people. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of in, a little in limbo with my art, with with what she does, with what I do. 
Um, but yeah, and 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 the focus right now around my artwork is like helping people um, see death and not such a debilitating idea, fearful, you know, um, avoiding something, not mm -hmm. doing things because of the fear of death, you know, living fully mm -hmm. knowing that we're just here for a time. So um, that's my stance. That's that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> I love her artwork as well. We, sh we will drop a link for her art on the in the channel. But everybody, thank you so much for joining us for this launch party. It's been really fun leading up to this. I've put a lot of time and effort into making sure that it was set up for y'all to both network and get more out of Triba. We're making something really incredible here. It's it is the people. It is y'all who are a part of this and making it happen. So I, I couldn't do it without you. And I really appreciate your support and your love and just being here. Like it means so much to me that there's so many people here and it's just a massive call. I see all these faces, all people that I love and that I care about and that have helped me in the past years, uh, just struggling as a dad and, and an entrepreneur and a, a husband and all the frustration that comes with building your business from ground zero. I think we can all relate to that. Like, and, and we we're all doing it together. So I really appreciate this. And I want to know anything you guys think that could make it better, you know, ways that we can improve this. It's a work in progress. It really is. And I love that term because my whole life is a work in progress. I don't know about you, but I'm just trying to learn from y'all what's worked and what hasn't worked. So the more activity we can get in here, that's quality, the better. And this is just sort of going to help us filter that down. But thank you so much for joining us. All of you, Clara, John, Garrett. Um, thank you, Sam. I go through the whole list here. Uh, thank you, Sam. Your, your enthusiasm <laughs> and passion is contagious. We love it. Oh, thank, thank you. Sam. Thank you. We'll, we'll, love, Sam. we'll wrap up the introductions here. I mean, we could go through everybody in the chat who have something to offer the community, but I don't want to drag this on too long, and y'all are welcome to connect more afterwards. Um, if anybody does want to turn on their camera, I'm not going to put the spotlight on you, but if you want to turn on your camera and share a little bit, you can now. This is sort of the open Q&A discussion. Somebody has a call coming through. Uh, that was Roberto. <laughs> uh, okay, so Emma's going to turn on her camera. Give me one second. Cool. If y'all have to hop off, don't feel like you are obligated to stay. I appreciate your support in joining the launch party. Uh, shout out to all the new subs, Tribe of Gold members. We will be contacting you to set up your intro meeting as Tribe of Gold. Where's all that background noise coming from? Max Payne, can you mute your camera or mute your mic? Thank you. Also, special shout out to everybody on Twitch. BU, Liam, Pipsy Chick, and Paro. Uh, let's see what other subs. Indy as well on there. We got Viso Lassie, PX Pug. Stefan Kuber, Steph, I need you guys to introduce yourself in the intro channel. So when you come in, you got to go to the introduce yourself channel, put in there what you do. If you've done it like months and months and months ago, go ahead and reintroduce yourself. There's no problem with that. Go ahead and post your links. Tell us what you do. And if you are on Twitch or YouTube following us, put in there your, your Twitch so that I know who you are and we can give you a shout out on stream. But thank you guys so much as well. Like you made this party so much fun. Um, we'll do some games and hangouts with people who can stick around. I'm just kind of taking the day to make sure this goes smoothly and everybody's welcomed in. Any uh, thoughts, questions? Oh, Emma turned on her camera. Welcome. Emma's been helping us with our TikTok and Instagram strategy and some Twitter stuff. She's awesome. Hi, everyone. Um, Hello. I'm gonna keep this short because my mouth hurts. But um, oh yeah, you just had I wisdom do... teeth out. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Uh, Mad I props. I primarily do like social media management and marketing, but I primarily work with small businesses and retail. And then I also work with entertainment companies. So large music news uh, companies. I run their TikToks and I make memes for them. And I basically strategize how to make their projects go viral online. And then I make it happen. But other than that, I make memes, and then I think I got nominated for going by the seat of my pants most often. Most likely to fly by the seat of her pants. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. That's what you got to do to meme, though, sometimes. And that's what works in an age in an age where attention is so 
instantaneous. You gotta be in the moment, and she's great with trends and all that cool stuff. Uh, pretty funny, too. Thanks, Emma. Glad you're here, even though you just had your wisdom teeth out. It's good to hear you. And see your face. Thanks for turning your camera on. I think I looked a lot, lot, lot worse when I had my wisdom teeth removed. I was, like, all black and blues. Ugh. But you look good. Uh, Matthias, you want to tell us what you what, about what you're up to since you're here, man? What's yeah, what's up, everybody? And uh, <laughs> thank you, Sam, for the invite. I know it's been about a year. No, actually, no. It's been no way. Year. You're kidding me. Since it's been that long. Like this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The last time too long. Like, too long. Into, yeah. So really quickly, I run a business called Jasper and Gold. It's an herbal infusion business. Pretty much I take tea and then I mix it with like culinary ingredients to make these specialty tea drinks. But doing that allows me to tap into a lot of things that I'm really passionate about in terms of like uh, diet, mental health, emotional health, and just kind of being in a space where you live a stressless life, I guess, as much as possible. Um, it also has been allowing me to connect with a lot of people in Durham as far as, uh, I don't know, I really like helping other entrepreneurs, helping the, the next generation, I guess, kind of moving in path of uh, uh, abundance, I guess, and just kind of like starting up whatever their own business or ideas or dreams are, and then uh, scaling it or executing their dreams and visions on all of those things. So I've been connecting with a lot of people, but I'm in a location now. So when we last talked, I was either about to be in a location or I was mostly doing wholesale. Uh, so I've, a lot of the time now, this past year, when I haven't been talking as, as, as much is because I've been managing a shop and they use my product as one of their main uh, sellers instead of like coffee. We have coffee, but uh, my infusions are the main thing. So it's almost like a tea cafe. It's, it's like I'm living the dream pretty much. But uh, I'm going back to doing wholesale as well as running the cafe at the same time. So that's going to be pretty fun uh, venture for this year. But I, I look forward to being able to connect with more people like I used to do. Now that things are, you know, after you do a lot of the, the groundwork, now you can go back to connecting and traveling and all that stuff. So... Um, but it was really fun. Uh, it's still really fun. I'm excited about the year and uh, just grateful to Woo. be asked to be a part and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, man. I'm glad I to have you in here. Me. Everybody needs some tea and coffee in their life. Oh, did I tell you I'm getting into coffee? Did I tell you, you that? Well, you just did. That was like the, you, you released it. You announced it live. Okay, so Jasper and Gold <laughs> now does coffee. I love the infusions, the teas. Yeah. Jasper and Gold now does coffee. Sort of kind. Of, so now I'm I'm jumping into consulting. That's what I meant to say. So I'm I have a business partner that his focus is coffee, and we're working on doing an elevated experience around tea and coffee and the combination of both of those. So I'm hoping more coffee shops or cafes or whoever could do like tea, coffee, and then also whatever really nice thing. Uh, so we're really experienced and heavy. So that's what I that's what I specifically mean when I'm into coffee now. And then I make like with his help tea, coffee drinks. So yeah, but okay. <laughs> Thumbnail? Never heard of it. Okay, I put his Facebook. I put his Facebook in there. Go check out Jasper and Gold. Um, we did a podcast a while ago that too that was pretty good. Yeah. I, oh my god, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Anthony. Anthony's also here. Oh, Liam made it. And Michelangelo. I mean, we could just keep going, man. We could just keep going. There's so many incredible people in this community. It's it it blows my mind sometimes. Just like how did how did I get so lucky? Like the network effect, it's real. You hang around people, quality people, you're gonna attract more quality people. And yeah, we get some weird people in here, but I bring down that band hammer. That's why they call me Slam. Slam Hebda. They don't call me slam for no reason. And that's the one time I can say they don't call me something for no reason and actually mean it. I bring down the band hammer. Anybody, anybody out here who act in sussy, you're going down. It's like the people in this call. I mean, I, I honestly, um, I'm sorry, Novocaine. I don't remember if I've talked to you, but if you, if they have the verified profile, if they have the verified tag, just verified, 
that means that we have um, talked to them. I've talked to them and know they're an actual honest to God person. They're not a scammer. I can't guarantee they're not a scammer. I can't say that. You still need to use your own discretion and be careful out there, people. The internet is a dangerous place. The internet is a dangerous place. But yeah, this is the new way of doing business. Even if you're doing a physical product like Jasper, uh, like Matthias is, you can still offer that network and collaboration. He's really big in the startup community. I've gone to um, some events and networking stuff with him. Uh, he's come and spoke in Triba before. Like, He's just a really awesome guy. And he's putting the work into the community and it's coming back to him. So that's what you guys should do too. Follow his example. Most of you are, but if you're watching on Twitch or something, you're not part of Triba, go to discord.gg slash Triba. This is where it all happens. This, These rooms, this space, it's a physical space we come to. We're all we're always hanging out. No, Matthias, you're an awesome guy. Thanks, dude. I'm glad glad you made it. Glad you made it. Um, but yeah, we should play a game. I feel like we need music or a game or something. Everyone's just sitting here listening to me talk, and I'm done. I'm done talking. Travis Gold is live. Go sign up. Go do it. I'm gonna put it in. Uh, put it in general. Get more info. Put it in also in the co-working chat. Uh, gold. Less than the price of uh, three coffees a month. L less than the price of Twitter, Twitter blue. <laughs> uh, where did it go? The link is. I have too many links. Put it in co-working chat, like the actual co-working chat channel. I put it in there, yeah. Oh, you already did? Yeah, but or no, sorry, in the lounge. Okay. Well, I'm gonna pull up the gleam though, and we'll see who gets the Amazon gift card. Bum 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 bum. Drum roll, please. Somebody play drum roll music. <sighs> Bookmarks. All right, I have to figure out. I've never actually run a Gleam competition. 184 users? 184 people completed this? Oh my gosh. They did, wow. Actually, it says it ends in nine hours. Does that mean I have to wait for it to go through? Well, all right. Maybe I can't do this right now. That's not the right link, sorry. That's not the gleam. Well, you still have time then. That's the, the nice part. You still have time to share or follow Triba and get in on that giveaway. So we, we're giving away, White Rabbit is community power. It's like the, it's like the Energizer Bunny for communities. Like bum, 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 bum. So, <clears throat> so you basically get $100 from White Rabbit for being a supporter of Triba. Not everybody gets it. Only one of you. Gleam is sweet. I'm probably going to use it more to do giveaways. So we'll do like we'll get like Tabalo to put in fifty dollars, and we'll do a giveaway. Um, we'll get different people to sponsor giveaways. Vic will give us a thousand bucks to do a giveaway. Right. Right. <laughs> I thought I I didn't know if I had heard that correct at first. I was like, I have to look. I'm like, I might have been spacing out, but. Um... <laughs> Oh, uh, we we can we can talk about some factoring or financing on your end or something. We can we can get something happening. Probably <laughs> that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Well, that's I mean we're gonna run some conferences as well. So when that happens, we're definitely gonna I get gotta, some sponsors so I, for it. I'm gonna submit a tech claim while I have you right now. But I I don't know what happened, but I think I got the the gold went and turned into an INFJ badge on me. So what? I, no, yeah. Look at look at my rolls. I don't know. I can't fix it. So. <laughs> The I, INFJ badge is normal, though. Uh, that is a different badge. It's not no, what he I mean, got. Like, even, in, even in the member list, I'm no longer under the gold verified. Like, the poll is gone. Oh, no, that's because that was actually a um, that was a test role. That wasn't the real role. Oh. They're, the real role is controlled by Discord. Discord today. Yeah, the real role yeah. is controlled by Discord. That was like a test in role. In the server subscriptions, the subscriptions tab. It's like on the top of the desktop on the top left hand side. But yeah, Under that is events at the very top of the server. 
Oh, I see it. Yeah, that one gives you the roll automatically. So the only way I can see is either they pop up on the right side above verified, or uh, I go look at the rolls and see how many there are. But yeah, there weren't eight, Garrett. That was the test roll. There's, yeah, yeah, there's only three that, right now, right. but I, I honestly, like, I just want to, like, get it out there. People can subscribe at their own rate when they feel like they want to. But I want it to be something that y'all see as a valuable business resource. So you can find clients, relationships, and new products. So I really wanted to talk about Shot Call. It's like a creator platform that lets you tap into the network influence effect. Uh, think about like Twitch points. Vic, have you ever used Twitch at all? Like watched somebody, you know, you get yeah. like channel points, like they reward you for just watching and like commenting or discord gives you like points when you interact in the channels. Uh, shot call basically converts your whole social media orbits into that so that people can subscribe with their engagement and equivalates that to a subscription. So say you have like a 7.99 subscription for gold. If I did shot call, y'all could go follow and reshare and tweet and tag us and you would get the points equivalent to do that subscription. And then you get exclusive content you can download from there. If you want to do shot call, I have a special referral code from shot call. Um, they don't give any discounts or anything, but if you sign up for shot call, DM me, I'll give you our my my creator code, but it is really really awesome. And I think we're going to put some of the content, behind the scenes content on there so that people who can't afford $7.99 a month can still access it, like students and things. It is basically, oh, you taking off later, Nova? You taking off it, John? Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't read right above that. Later, Nova. <laughs> later, Nova Kane. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day. Um, let's see who else is. Heading out. Does anybody have to head out? We good? I have to head out right now. So actually, okay. I will uh, see you all later. All right, man. Take care. Have Thanks fun. for joining us. Great workshop. Yeah, not technically a workshop, Liam, but Liam, you want to share what you do? You want to turn on your camera? Is he here? Shotcall.gg. Should probably actually share the tribal one because we did set up a tribal one yesterday. Check out Shotcall, guys. Uh, our other our other big partner that didn't join us for launch, but we are doing a uh, sort of live workshop with is Orbit. The Orbit app's been a big part of what I use for community management. Go to orbitmodel.com if you want to check them out. Actually, we have a special code for them, too. Um, pull that. Well, these will all be posted in there. Y'all will get to see them. Who wants to play a little game to wrap this up? I feel like we should do something fun. I'll play. Yeah? You guys want to play um, Putt-Putt? Or do you want to play something like jackbox games where i feel like jackbox games is just too much fun to pass up yeah jackbox games we could do a t-shirt ko let's do a t-shirt ko and see what funny stuff we come up with uh if y'all can't stick around that's fine but t-shirt ko ko is like you come up with some prompts and then you all just draw something on your computer and then you come you match them up <laughs> and you vote on them so it's like a battle of t-shirts it's actually really hilarious and well worth sticking around if you don't have a business meeting or something you have to hop off to. Obviously business first. But this is now my business, is managing all you people. Not managing, leading. I just read a post by The Future on, on LinkedIn and it reminded me of what John was telling me. It's the, the words, the terminology we use is important, the framing. Go check out our episode on Twitch. But I am leading y'all into a more collaborative business space. And a lot of times it feels a lot like managing a bunch of toddlers. But I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. You can't even deny it. It's it's true. The staff is great. I, I couldn't do it without the staff. They're always banning people and, and explaining where things should go. Oh, I want to share the actual application. 
Um, okay, so if you guys click on my screen, watch screen. Got to go back to the day job SEO grind. Vic, don't pretend like you can't do that in the with, while playing in the background. But later, Vic, thanks for joining. <laughs> I don't think, Samantha, you ever got to introduce yourself on, on this. Did you? Also, where am I getting background noise? Michelangelo? What's up, dude? Yeah, sorry about that. No worries. Well, one, another kind of one day we could play sometimes is GPT-3 Redox. You oh, right. It's GPT-3 Redox? No, re Redox. So you ask uh, chat GPT-3 to, to write a riddle, and then we try to solve it together. It's quite cool. Oh, that. That, even, that sounds even more fun. Huh. Alright, votes in chat. Chat GPT three riddles or T shirt KO. Launch day T shirt KO. We could make a sticker out of the out of the T shirt. The best T shirt could become a sticker that Summer makes, and then we send it out. I vote for T shirt KO. Okay, yeah, you got it. We gotta play this. Alright, so Everybody go to jackbox.tv. I'm going to try to join before y'all. And type in the code YVPH. YVPH. Someone's going to get there before me. I made it. I I'm B Sam. I forgot about that. We got Mike in here. What up, dude? Welcome, welcome. We got John. John's in. I'll make it big screen on the stream as well so y'all can see. All right, while I'm letting y'all join, I have to go to the bathroom really bad. Somebody somebody put some music in the channel. I'll be right back. 10 second break. I just hear a bunch of people changing their characters. <laughs> Pip. Impara, are you in here? John's in here. Mike. Pip. BU. Anthony. I need you in here. Ryan. Summer. Amparo. Michelangelo. Actually, there's only three more spots available, so hurry up. Hurry up. Three more spots. Go to Jackbox TV. Type in the code YVPH. If you're watching on stream, you can join too. Expensive indulgent tea. Yes, that's what Matthias does. Well, it's actually not tea. It's an herbal infusion, John. It's an herbal infusion. Yeah, you can't confuse the two. It's funny because he actually calls it tea a lot. And I was working with him doing his website. And every time he would say tea, I'd be like, nope. Herbal infusion. <laughs> Okay, who else we got joining? Albany, we're going to start here. Countdown. Countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright. Press start to fight. Alright, so you got to have your browser up. 2, just read that 1. What? I read what backwards? He said press start to fight. It said press fight to start. 
Ah. Uh, of course. Mushroom coffees? Honestly, I want to try the, the lion's mane coffee that, uh, what's his name talks about all the time. What's your favorite podcast? We were going to do podcast teasers at three. After this, I'm going to show you guys some of my favorite podcasts and you can share yours. We can make, yeah, we can make a little list of our favorite podcasts. Akimbo. Revisionist history. I don't know any of these. I'm going to check them out. Alright, so the way this goes is we're going to draw a few things. Just whatever comes to your mind. Draw that. And then we're going to just come up with a bunch of random prompts. Nobody's judging you. Our, all of us are going to have terrible art. That's the point. Last time we had our, our top voted shirt was a skill issues. And it was just the funniest, like, drawing. Um... Let's see. What to do, what to do. Is that yellow? This is without prompts, we just come up with something? Yeah, you just draw whatever. I think you only get to do one drawing. So, make it good. But I think we do go back and draw again later. Oh. I wish I had a way to do this fill in. There's no fill option. I'm pretty sure we draw three times, don't we? Oh, you draw the three? Yeah, I think it's three different drawings, but you have to turn it in in 13 seconds. Time goes short. Hurry up and finish already. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was just one drawing that I had to do. John, make sure you submit, 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 submit. Oh man. No. <laughs> Should I just restart? No, we get three. On to drawing number two. Uh oh. Okay. All right. What should I draw? Now remember, you gotta submit before the timer goes off. Yeah, 19 seconds left. Time is about to expire. You may want to finish up. Okay, submit. Submit. John. Excellent. Now really get nuts with this last John. Begin. You didn't submit it. Oh, man. Let's see if I can do this. Nope. I don't know.
Okay. I got 31 seconds. I'm good. I'm good. Submit. Submit. Challenge complete. All right. Now the fun part, fam. For your last exercise, you will write as many slogans or phrases as you can. These have nothing <laughs> to do with your drawing, so just put those out of your mind. And use a suggestion if you need one. Accepting your limitations is a part of life. Go! I'm looking for like three or four from each of you. Does that seem doable? Just give it a shot. Let's find out if it's well, Mike got zero. Enough training. Direct your attention to Tribe of Gold Launch. Select Somebody put that one. Boring and one slogan to create the perfect <laughs> Oh, these are great. Oh, but I want to use more than one. That's good. Whoever drew that. Okay. So everybody choose a slogan to go with your image and then they fight. To the death. Choose your slogan. Choose your t-shirt. Oh, wait, you only get one t-shirt to choose from. Never mind. The tournament. All right, chapter two. The fight. Enter shirt. Yeet. Slapping. Versus. Riba will run it live. <laughs> Oh, oh, you gotta vote on your desktop, okay. <laughs> That's a... <laughs> oh, accurate. Skill issue, it's a skill issue. Oh, nice. Nice. A new challenger Good job, Mike. I want you to Be human. Be... <laughs> I don't know. Do we have a contender? Hmm. Four seconds. Oh. Oh. We'll run it live. Still the 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 leading T-shirt. Oh what? <laughs> you are what you eat. <laughs> Oh Clearly man! Ate a Dorito. Dude, <laughs> dude ate a laser beam. Fatality. Fatality! Oh, Mike! Mike got knocked out. John's in the lead with "You are what you eat." <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I think, therefore, I am. Oh, Jackbox TV. Go to Jackbox TV, type in the code YVPH. Oh, man. Ooh, that was a close one. That was a close one. The existing duck is out, sweet duck. First round, we'll run it live. Subscribe. <laughs> Very nice.
Well done. Use your devices to enter one new drawing and as many new slogans as you wish. Oh, okay. We're doing new drawings. Go. Hmm. Oh, man. What to draw? What to draw? Hmm. No, I don't like that color. I'm running out of time! Finish and submit. Wow, what a drawing, Sam. Submit, submit. Start right. All right. Now. Oh, I didn't submit the last one. As we approach the second gauntlet, the cruel winds of chance have switched around. Submit, submit. No, we're already good. All right. The of Let's see. <laughs> All right. I wish you got to go back through and vote on the. Oh, I think after the third round, you vote on the ones... I don't know, I just feel like we should do another mix where we get to choose a slogan for another shirt. The shirt with the golden arm. <laughs> don't conform. <laughs> oh, boy. Hmm... Votes are in. Don't conform. <laughs> I like screw the system though too. That was a tough one. I'm just gonna go live on an island. Oh, a new challenger appears. Oh, nothing to lose. <laughs> See, why did it give everybody the same shirt? Wait, that was the one I had. I voted for my own. <laughs> okay. Clearly, I got screwed with the shirt. <laughs> the stronger together. <laughs> All the beans in one brew. I don't know. The vomiting. Yeah, the vomiting. <laughs> Don't conform. I feel like we're all being conformists and just going with the mainstream sh choice here. I mean, isn't that kind of ironic, fam? <laughs> uh, 
I assume that's some sort of like chair or swing under a nice tree, right? Yeah, there's in fact a gravestone that says the if you don't get there is killing me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well played, B. Oh, nice. Winner. We got a winner. I well was done, I conflicted fam. on that one because I made the t-shirt on the right, but Amazing. I put together the t-shirt on the left. Ooh. Yeah, that's called a <laughs> conflict of interest. Yes. Oh, now a shirt gets real. This is where shirt gets real. Everybody, I, I gotta take off a layer here. It's about to get real. You are what you eat versus if you don't get there. <laughs> this shirt's so bright, though. Uh. <laughs> hey, that's what I thought. These go, these go together. <laughs> You are what you eat if you don't get there. You better eat the right things. <laughs> Fuck it. We'll run it live. <laughs> oh. Uh. Ah, uh, it's still the winner. <laughs> well done, B. Don't conform. So now we have to make a choice. Who drew the rip under a tree? Uh, don't conform. I don't want to conform, but I also like the shirt. It's just ah, uh, it was a tough one, guys. Bu <laughs> went, with... <laughs> went with her own. Nice job, Summer. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Uh, we have the champion, my wife. And B, you wrote the slogan, don't conform, nice. John did the art. Beautiful, beautiful John. Thoroughly impressed. It's a beautiful shirt. Don't conform. You can order it online. Um, I think it takes you straight there. Click here to share or buy the t-shirts. Yeah, you can go. You can actually go buy the don't conform shirt and conform to our tribal ways. Pip's winning shirt was so incredible it took two weeks for anyone to notice Pip was a regular non-sapient dog that happened to paw the right buttons on a phone. Even so, Pip's shirt united the world and Pip became the second dog ever to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> I have never noticed that. That's great. <laughs> Shout out to Coach John Fitch for being here and participating in this game. Thanks, man. You're awesome. And I'm glad you could be here for the whole thing. Well done. Well done. Best artist. Drawings used on three shirts, sir. Well done. Didn't know you had it in you. It's quite the talent. Shirtalities. I like that. <laughs> Shirtalities. Sure talent. You got some shirt talent, man. Some shirt talent. Those shirts be looking to fly. You know, ever since you've told me about having like a dark shirt, I've realized like when I wear a light colored shirt, it's just distracting. Like, I don't know. Well, well played. Well played, played Tribe of Fam. One times. Well played. All right. Podcasts. I got to check out this podcast. Exit. Yes, I saved the link. So, favorite podcast y'all have? Moving into a little bit more of a businessy conversation. We still keep it pretty casual. We keep it cash. What is your favorite podcast? I'm gonna look up these ones you said, John. Um, of course, a quest called Tribe. I have to look up that one first. And I don't think we've published some of the more recent stuff because we've just been doing it all on Twitch. But there are several episodes on here. One by Roberto da Costa, uh, one by Garrett, one by Tabalo, all guys who are part of this tribe of gold. And my favorite podcast is probably right now is Marketing Over Coffee. Uh, marketing. If I can spell over. 
marketing over coffee is pretty fast uh condensed updates on what's going on in the marketing world and then they do interviews with uh authors experts in marketing so it's just very high value podcast with uh john wall they've had seth gooden simon sinek um some of these other people that i really don't recognize right off the bat seth gooden's and awesome lots yeah. of good books on marketing <clears throat> yeah what is the one you recommended um akimbo a-k-i-m-b-o Yep, that's the one. Ah, podcast. Oh, so this is Seth Gooden. Yeah. Oh, all right. I kind of hold him as like a marketing and business sage. It's very, very wise, very, very calm, very, very deep, thoughtful ideas. Interesting stuff, indeed. Sweet. Yeah, I'll check this out. Society and Culture podcast. It's good. It's really good. How we can change the culture. Seeing what's happening and choosing to do something. Interesting. Do you have a recommended episode, recent episode, or anything we should check out? Oh, you can confidently jump in anywhere and get a lot of value. <clears throat> That's good. I love podcasts yeah. like that. Yeah, How big is your very family? Very thoughtful stuff. I'm going to listen to this one. Do it. How big is your family? Am I sharing the actual the last 15 years ago, episode? No. You'd have to be streaming specifically Spotify, not your screen. I thought I was. Right. Let me change it. Change window. And what we discovered within a few minutes of getting here. Well, let me see here. I might have had it muted. At least in the neighborhood we were in, none of the houses had doorbells. It took a little while to figure out why, and then it came to me. He said none of the houses in his neighborhood had doorbells. If we don't, where he was growing up. Go away. Oh yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's Seth. And this is Akimbo. Huh. What? Summer's Summer's mom just always has her door open during the summer. Family. But first, here's a message. Such so foreign from me for me from like northwestern PA. Hi Seth, this is an ad <laughs> for the Gulabis. It's like that in California for sure. Lots of doors open, screen doors only, that kind of thing for sure. To think about it because it yeah. explains an I like enormous it. amount. It's a very community-centric world. Some of the changes that we're going through. How big right is now. your family? As you've heard me talk about before, I'm going to skip through and see if I can Keith find. What Johnstone wrote about to see these two factors at work in a really shoes today. Do your parents have the money to buy? There has been an extraordinary shift. How big his family is. Definitely sounds like a podcast I'll listen to. But yeah, it's it's high value for sure. I like to listen to these when I'm running or something. We're going for walks. Like, I don't know. When do y'all listen to podcasts? What's the best time for you? Cleaning. Cleaning. Yeah, it's a good time. one. Yeah, you can't do anything really visual when you're cleaning, so it's a great time. I need to get an elliptical so I can do more. Uh, I can watch stuff too. <laughs> Exercise. Ellipticals are the best. What's the other one you said? Revolutionaries? Uh, revisionist oh. history. And that's by Malcolm Gladwell of a uh, uh, really good writer. Lots of interesting things. Nice. It's basically going back and digging in around history, appreciating the more nuance of it, and often teachable moments are available. He's brilliant. He's, he's, he's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> cool. You know, you might know him from his books, uh, The Tipping Point, yeah. and, yeah. Uh, you know, things like that. Yeah, he's that guy. <clears throat> Very thoughtful stuff. Super high production value on this one. The Cadillac. Let's just take a listen real quick. We'll skip through. We'll listen to the intro first. We never lose sight of our purpose. Oh. With health <laughs> of course it's an ad first. Of course it's an ad. You gotta gotta pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> gotta pay the bills. All right, it's starting. This episode is sponsored by Cadillac. Okay, what we got is we got one of these massive... Wait, this is a video one? It's like 3x nope. the size of the one you put in oh. overhead. Definitely can't. They may do video sometimes, but sometimes their stuff sounds like it would be video because it's just sort of uh, more of a uh, high production a, value a kind of journey. Seat, car seat bottom. We got a stroller. We got two backpacks. A whole bunch of audio recording. A bunch of audio equipment. This is just warming up. Now, we're not putting down 
the rear seats. The rise of guinea pigs. I'm in New York's Hudson Valley with my producers, Jacob and Joe. The Minnesota Starvation is more like it. Trunk of an SUV. This one? No, no, just the one I'm hearing is that's more kind of what it's like once he kind of gets into it. Oh, oh. Of our purpose. At Premier, we never lose sight of our purpose. Can I go back? He just kind of, in this show, he particularly sort of goes back and regards events in history and reveals interesting things about them, connections, underlying stuff. Really fascinating. So it's kind of like what Garrett does in the Philosophy Club, but more structured and pre-recorded. Sure, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I, have one, I have one more, if you like, uh, specifically what about creativity. It? It's yeah, called yeah. Uh, Broken Record with Rick Rubin. Broken Record, uh, or Rick Rubin, you know, absolutely legendary yeah. producer. Yeah. And, um, and he has fantastic conversations with people from, uh, you know, they're absolutely the top of their game. And it's often insightful and thoughtful and interesting. Uh, the one with Andre 3000 in particular was what sort of got me wanting to listen to this podcast. So if you find, it's a little ways ago, but if you find the episode with Andre 3000 from Outcast, they have this wonderful moment where they're talking about struggling to be creative in the studio, and they just have this they have this fantastic interaction that expresses exactly the kind of way I feel about creativity, and was uh, it's just very very thoughtful stuff. I love it. <clears throat> I found it. Yeah, this is a really good episode. I'll have to listen to this one. Yeah, I can find you the clip on YouTube real quick if you're curious. Let me share as well the episode link for y'all if you want to check it out. Did I just put an extra letter in there? No. Okay. I could also do a listening party on Spotify. This week in That'd biology, be fun. In here. the podcast about viruses, Wait. the kind. Is it because I'm live? It won't let me do sick. it. I just realized we're on Twitch. I hope we don't get like copyright issues. Yeah, careful. Listening to podcasts. Yeah. I'd... I totally forgot that that might be a thing they have. Um, I'm not listening to these Twitch completely. I'm just testing. I'll listen That's to these the in That's a specific moment um, that I came across that made me want to follow up on the show. And have, it's been valuable. <clears throat> okay, cool. Yeah, for, for copyright issues, I'm not going to play anything else yeah. on stream. Careful, but... careful. All right, guys. Thank you all for joining us today. It has been a great launch party. I'm excited to welcome in all the Tribe of Gold members. Let's just look here on the sidebar and see. Um, there's 20 verified members on, only one gold verified member on, but that just means people have their... Uh, they're not visible online right now. If you guys go to the Tribe Doc community, you can see the website, but I put the subscription link in co-working and in general, and it's on the top left hand of our server. As always, thank you all for boosting, supporting, just showing up and engaging with us. We love hearing all the different voices and seeing what people have to offer. It's a very collaborative environment, and I'm looking forward to some pretty incredible stuff in 2023. Thank you all for being here. We will wrap up the Thanks stream. Thanks for having us, Sam. Yeah, man. <laughs> always welcome in Tribo. Always welcome in Tribo. Who else do we have hanging around here so far? Amp, Anthony, Samantha, and Summer. Y'all are awesome. You made this happen. You're all part of it. And anything you need from me, just hit me up in a DM. You'll have my personal number. I'll make sure to do that. All right, I'm going to take a break. I've been streaming for a few hours now. So I will see you all tomorrow when we do the marketing workshop at 12. And that's all for today, Triba. Take care. <laughs>